Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Fairy Tale. I Don't Want to Be the President. Chapter 41. Ha. Drink. Ha. Rhodes punched the sandbag in front of him, his bare upper body reflecting light because it was covered with sweat. This is a new evening training project. He spent a lot of money to buy the sandbag a few days ago. He always felt that it would help him become more self-disciplined. Because the money has been spent, if it is not used properly, it will feel very bad and distressed. After playing for half an hour, Rhodes stopped panting, wiped the sweat from his face, gently kneaded and patted his sore arms. After his breathing and heartbeat had almost calmed down, Rhodes went to take a shower. Before coming out of the bathroom, he bent his arms in front of the mirror, you seem to have gotten a little stronger, right? He bent down and patted his calf. Compared with the chubby appearance that he patted and shook three times before, it was really much stronger now. Snoring. Worm gave him a positive answer. That's good, let's start studying. Rhodes returned to the bedroom and sat at the table, opened a magazine and notebook and started writing and drawing. He had already read through more than 60 magazines using Feng Yang's glasses, and now they were divided into two piles. There are more than 20 books in a stack. There are photos of Mira in them, no, and they contain relatively important information. Another pile of more than 30 books contains only ordinary information. What Rhodes is doing now is to sort out useful information, such as major guilds, famous magicians, famous cities, etc. He will also record some special magic that causes trouble mentioned in the news. He must understand the world as much as possible and adapt to it so as not to get into trouble in the future due to common sense mistakes. In addition, there are many, kill at first sight, magic in this world. People who don't understand it can easily fall into it, but once they understand it, they can easily break it. For example, the charm magic was banned by the council a few years ago. To be honest, after knowing the effect of charm magic, I kind of wanted to learn it. Porla of the Red Sky, was expelled from the regular guild giant's nose for stealing. She has been wandering around the border area between the Kingdom of Fury and the Kingdom of Bosco, occasionally committing crimes. Rhodes wrote down the information about this dangerous person, closed his notebook, and started today's meditation practice. The president said that if you want to become stronger, you can only rely on down-to-earth efforts. No matter how powerful the magic is, it needs to be supported by corresponding magic power. Mira rarely warned him in a very serious manner that he should never be too ambitious, otherwise he would not only hurt himself, but may also affect his companions. Rhodes is a person who listens to advice, especially in areas he doesn't know enough about. So he just accumulated magic power to exercise his body every day, and was cautious even when using his mental power to explore the summoner's canyon that was covered by black mist. It would be okay if the, herd of beasts running amok, only happened in the forest, but once it happened in the city, Rhodes felt like he was in jail. On July 22, the weather was sunny. Today's opponent is Kana, and Rhodes thinks he can do it. Kana, as usual, had been drinking heavily with a large bucket of wine in the morning. Macau, who was sitting next to her, was one of her drinking buddies. Kana, are you getting better and better at drinking? Gulu Gulu, ha. Kana wiped the corner of his mouth and glanced at Macau. I want you to care, but you are also drinking. Macau spread his hands, it's not that I want to worry about it, I just think that if it's a girl, it would be better to drink less. Hey, I won money yesterday, so of course I have to drink to my heart's content today. Kana complained, picked up the barrel again, but drank a little slower. Today's young people. Macau sounded like an old man. After taking a few sips as Macau sighed, Kana put down the barrel with a bang. Rode, are you ready? Right away. As an excellent worker, Rhodes had to finish your own work first, don't get drunk again. It's still early. Because he is often drunk, Kana is very aware of his alcohol capacity, and drinking a bucket in the morning can only be regarded as an appetizer. Mira made a rough calculation, and Kana alone accounted for more than 20% of the entire guild's alcohol consumption. In other words, a considerable part of Rhodes' current salary can be regarded as Kana's contribution. After Rhodes finished the cleaning work at hand, the two went to the backyard to prepare for the duel. Of course there were people watching the fun, but not as many as usual. Rhodes summoned the river crab as usual and prepared to test it. 
Just in case, check again. Kana took out three playing card-sized cards from the satchel on his waist, will this guy die? Rhodes said, don't worry, it will be repatriated if it is injured to a certain extent, and it will recover tomorrow. And compared to Poro, river crabs and stone beetles seem to be less, spiritual. Then I'm welcome. Kana showed a confident expression, and the card in his hand flashed with golden light. Is this still the drunkard? Rhodes found that Kana's whole, aura, changed a bit as soon as he became serious. He even had the illusion that he was facing Urza. The river crab charges forward, and Kana shoots out the three cards in his hand, hitting the river crab accurately on the head. The three cards exploded, and the golden light flashed, and the river crab had been sent back. This power. Somewhat unexpectedly, Rhodes summoned the ancient stone beetle. Kana threw out two cards, one turned into flames and the other turned into violent wind. The ancient stone beetle was hit by these two magics and instantly split into two stone beetles. This is not over yet, Kana shot three more cards, and three golden thunderbolts fell on the heads of the three stone beetles. Light, fire, wind, thunder. Rhodes' eyes were filled with cool special effects, and he now understood the meaning of an all-around magician. After the three stone beetles were beaten and split into six mini stone beetles, Kana casually shot out six more cards. Six explosions sounded, and the stone beetle was sent back. Kana moved his wrists and said with a smile, Okay, the next close combat is the focus, right? Rhodes nodded. Although he could summon another river crab or a stone beetle alone, it was not necessary. This time should be regarded as a tactical mistake. When encountering enemies in the future, you must summon stone beetles and let them burrow into the ground. A few minutes later, Rod was lying on the ground doubting life. This speed, this power. Is Kana that strong? Of course, Kana is very strong. Facing Rhodes' question, Mira replied. She has been listed as an S-class mage candidate for three consecutive years. Unfortunately, she has been a little unlucky every time she takes the exam. Like meeting Urza in the exam, meeting Mist Gang, etc. Quote. S-class candidate. Rhodes thought for a moment about Urza's sense of oppression, and the powerful sleep magic of Mist Gang. I felt a lot better all of a sudden. It was not embarrassing for Mungshin to lose to Kana. Kana must be sad, right? Rhodes glanced at Kana, who was drinking from a small cup. People who look so bold on the surface also have their own troubles in their hearts. Kana's fighting skills are different from those of Natsu and others, focusing more on grappling and wrestling skills. I don't know if her exaggerated strength was gained by practicing lifting wine barrels every day. In addition, during the battle, Rhodes noticed that Kana raised his hand twice to insert an eye, and once raised his leg to kick the crotch. Fortunately, he stopped in time. However, Rhodes was still scared into a cold sweat. He would have to think carefully about how to deal with this kind of move in the future. Boys must protect themselves when going out. Rhodes took advantage of his free time to review the battle process and silently raised Kana's danger level by one level. Kana shook the empty barrel he had finished drinking. Rod, a glass of beer. Okay. Rhodes went to the corner and picked up a wine barrel, then paused, Kana. Did you just say a cup or a barrel? One cup, just one cup. Why are you so verbose? Kana glanced at Macau, who was arguing with Wakaba about their parenting experience. Rhodes poured a glass of wine for Kana with confusion, and then saw that Kana's drinking speed had slowed down. It was as if I couldn't bear it anymore so I took a sip to relieve my addiction. Why are you looking at me like that? You still want to fight me. You can continue to fight. Rhodes doesn't mind getting more experience, I just think there's something wrong with you. I think so too. Mira smelled the gossip and suddenly said, could it be that Kana has a boyfriend? How is that possible? Kana denied it. She raised her glass and said, wine is my boyfriend. That means you have someone you like, but you don't have the courage to confess it. The boys who have been in contact with Kana more recently, let me guess. Mira was particularly enthusiastic about this kind of thing, and she immediately targeted the person next to her, it's Rhodes. Kana, you must have been moved by Rhodes' indomitable spirit, and then you were fascinated by Rhodes' manliness in today's battle. Kana breathed a sigh of relief and felt relieved when she saw that Mira was still acting like a fool as usual. Last month, Mira also said that Wakaba has a crush on Lucky. 
That's nonsense, that guy obviously likes every beautiful and gentle girl equally. Mature guild members all know that any gossip coming from Myra's mouth should be ignored first and then questioned. Rhodes was not mature enough and immediately denied what she said. Although I am very happy to be praised so much by you Mira, my manhood today has been thrown to the ground by Kana's shoulder. He looked at Kana's crossed legs as she sat sideways in front of the bar, and was almost completely kicked off by Kana's high-heeled sandals. If it's not Rhodes, who else could it be? Mira thought, did Loki take action against you? Does he have the guts? Kana sneered, and that's not the kind I like, why would I talk about such a boring topic? Kana picked up the wine glass and strode away, pausing midway, then walking smaller, and finally sat down at the table with the two drinking buddies, Macau Wakaba. Mira pinched her chin and guessed, hmm, could it be Macau? The more you guess, the more outrageous it becomes, Miss M. Isla. Rhodes admired her imagination, Macau is almost 20 years older than him, right? That's possible. Mira smiled and finally ended the topic. By the way, would you like to go shopping with me this afternoon? Okay. Rhodes didn't hesitate, but asked doubtfully, isn't Mr. Cook responsible for the purchasing? He seems to like to select the ingredients himself. Because Mr. Cook and his grandson have an appointment to go boating and fishing this afternoon, so you can only ask me. Mira said, he has already made a list, we just need to choose carefully. Mr. Cook, who is extremely serious about cooking, can relax his principles in selecting ingredients for the sake of his grandson. It should be said that he is a very good grandpa. No problem, leave the baggage to me. Rhodes is very clear about his position, and such a difficult matter as selecting ingredients is definitely not his responsibility. Miss Mira, do you want to go out? Well, I have some things to buy. Miss Mira, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Miss Mira, will you be included in the next issue of Magic Weekly? Sorry, I haven't taken any magazine jobs recently. After leaving the guild and walking through the residential area, Rhodes immediately understood how popular Mira was. Almost everyone who recognized her greeted her with a smile, some would simply say hello, and some would take the opportunity to ask a question or two. You are so popular. Everyone is so enthusiastic. Mira sighed with a chuckle, occasionally, I feel troubled. Yes, yes, Miss Mirajan Strauss, the big star, would you consider putting on sunglasses and a mask next time you go out, to stand out from the crowd? As he became more and more familiar with her, Rode became more and more casual in talking to her. Good idea. Mira clapped her hands gently, but if I want to stand out from the crowd, I can try to look like you, only with a different head. Forgive me, I don't want to use the name of, Fairy Tales Transvestite Wizard, to board Soshala. Rhodes gave up and found that Mira no longer directly corrected his wording mistakes. Mira smiled, stepped onto the stone arch bridge side by side with Rhodes, and walked to the other side of the river. She pointed forward. The next intersection is Shopping Street. Have Rhodes been here before? Rhodes shook his head. Not yet. My current activities are basically on the other side of the river, and I always buy things in shops near the guild. Huh. You've been here for almost a month haven't you taken a look around the city? Mira asked, then what do you do after get off work? Practice physical fitness, practice magic, meditate, read books, read magazines. Rhodes thought about it and realized that everything he had done these days was for survival and a better survival. What can be called leisure is playing music on the gramophone while doing laundry. Even reading magazines is to understand the world and gather intelligence. Mira asked, don't you find it very hard? It's okay, learning magic is quite interesting in itself. Rhodes said. And only by practicing hard can I feel more at ease, and be able to pay off that large debt. Ah, the debt problem is indeed a headache. Mira said, but there is no need to put too much pressure on it, the president is rarely short of money. The more this happens, the more I want to pay it back as soon as possible. The president takes care of me too much. Rhodes was helpless. Many times, the pressure came from his own conscience. This seems to be considered internal friction. Mira smiled but said nothing. The president regarded Rhodes and other members as his own children. But Rhodes doesn't seem to realize it yet, or hasn't adapted to it yet. Get out of the way. Don't block the road. The two of them entered the shopping street while talking, but as soon as they took a few steps, someone rushed towards them. 
Get out of the way. Don't meddle in other people's business. The man was holding a women's handbag in one hand and a short knife in the other, threatening others to give way. Someone behind me was shouting things like, catch him, and, bag robber. Seeing the other party getting closer and closer, Mira frowned slightly and raised an arm to protect Rhodes behind her. Rod. Sisters, you said you're not good at fighting, right? Why are you protecting me? Rhodes naturally refused to let Mira face danger. He pressed down Myra's arm and took her to the side of the road. Mira seemed stunned for a moment, and then retreated to the side of the road obediently. Rhodes stood alone in the middle of the road, raised his leg and kicked the bag thief's wrist, causing the short knife to fly into the air. Hateful. Before the bag thief finished speaking, Rhodes had already pinched the opponent's wrist, and then gave him a hard push with his shoulder from one side of his body, Kana personally handed over the opponent's shoulder. With a muffled bang, the bag thief's body hit the road heavily, and the bag in his hand was thrown out. Without raising his head, Rhodes gently stretched his right hand to the side and just caught the drop dagger handle. Success in being cool. Rhodes was quite satisfied with his performance, but there was a slight problem in the following steps. Originally, he planned to catch the dagger, squat down and stick it in the ear of the bag thief to scare him, but he ignored some small problems. First of all, the ground of the commercial street is paved with bluestone, not the ground like that in the guild. Secondly, this bag thief is an ordinary person, and his body is not as strong as a magician. Rhodes' move was based on the intensity of fighting with his companions. He was knocked down so hard that he coughed out a mouthful of blood, rolled his eyes and fainted. There was no need to threaten him anymore. Ah, is it too harsh? I didn't mean to. Rhodes squatted down and checked with a guilty conscience. He was still alive, but his arm might be broken. It doesn't matter. Robbery with a knife is a serious crime. Just leave it to the sheriff to deal with it later. Mira picked up the bag on the ground and said, let's wait for the owner for a while. Some pedestrians nearby were already looking for the sheriff, and the person who had shouted from behind also ran over. Isn't that Miss Mira? It's the wizard of fairy tale. Someone soon recognized Mira, and also saw the guild crest that was not completely covered by Rhodes' short sleeves. Someone went to check the bag thief's injuries. After telling the story, not only did no one sympathize with him, but some even looked regretful. After being beaten up by Fairy Tales' magician, he only fainted and suffered a broken arm. This guy was very lucky. Rhodes listened to their praises and strange comments and looked at Mira with some suspicion, am I embarrassing fairy tale? That's not the case. Mira smiled, that was so handsome just now. Moreover, the reputation of the guild remains the same as before, they are all good people, but sometimes they do things inappropriately. Single quote. The owner is a plump ant with a slightly old-fashioned perm and blush. Mira handed the bag over, please check if there is anything missing. Thank you for your help. There is something very important in the bag, huh? The ant was slightly startled after seeing Myra's face clearly, and then saw Rhodes' coat of arms. You are the one, what a coincidence. My husband is also from your guild. His name is Wakaba. The ant made a gesture with her hand in front of her forehead. It's the one with the hair like this, the old smoker. So you are Mr. Wakaba's wife. My name is Mirajan, and this is Rod. Mira spoke to her aunt naturally. I often hear him talking about you and your daughter. Without you, his life would be a mess. Really? Is that what he said? The aunt was both happy and a little shy, he still knows that's the case. Yes, yes, Mr. Wakaba did mention you a lot. Rhodes laughed dryly. I mentioned it often, but most of the time I just complained about it. He found that Mira was quite good at talking. The first half of the sentence, I often heard him mention, was true, while the second half of the sentence, if not, was her speculation. However, the combination caused subtle misunderstandings. And even if the aunt asked about this when she got home, Wakaba would not be stupid enough to go out of her way to clarify it. Then the aunt asked some more questions, such as whether Wakaba stared at the waitresses in the guild every day or flicked cigarette ashes randomly. Mira answered them one by one with a smile, as if she didn't answer them. She is always shady. She will not talk nonsense about things that may affect the harmony of other people's families. Rhodes silently studied the art of speaking for a while, and a police officer wearing a brown uniform hurried over with his team. 
Wakaba's wife explained the situation to them and confirmed that Rhodes acted bravely. The sheriff checked the bag thief's injuries, and after confirming that he was not dead, he asked people to carry him away, and also took away the dagger used as evidence. As Mira said, robbery with a knife is a very serious crime in this country. Not only was Rode not held accountable, he also received thanks. Magnolia Reputation Plus 10. The matter was settled quickly, and the aunt also said goodbye to Mira, an old girl with whom we were very chatty. By the way, I give this to you, just think of it as a small thank you. The aunt stuffed two bills into Rhodes' hand. She looked at Mira and then at Rhodes, blinked and whispered, Young man, you have to work hard. Ah, I. Rhodes glanced at the ticket, Honey's Dessert House New Store Invitation Voucher. Before he could refuse, the aunt had already walked away. What did she say? Hem, give us hospitality coupons. Rhodes thought for a moment and handed both of them to her, do you like desserts? It won't open until next month. Mira took one and shook it, shall we try it together then? Hem, okay. Next month will be more than a week away, and there will be desserts. Rhodes is a little looking forward to it. Then, it's time to get down to business. Mira put away the hospitality coupon, took out the shopping list, and opened it to reveal a long piece of paper. Rhodes went over to take a look, held his pendant, and let he crab carry it back later. The prosperity of the shopping street is somewhat different from Rhodes' imagination. Compared with the high-rise buildings and busy traffic before the time travel, this place should be regarded as a form between an urban commercial street and a rural market. There were not too few pedestrians coming and going, and the sounds of hawking were also coming and going. There are both good-sized shops and simple stalls along the street. Considering that this is a city or town with a permanent population of only 60,000, such a shopping street should be considered very good. Mira selects and selects high-quality fruits, vegetables and meats, and uses her pleasant voice to skillfully negotiate prices with bosses with different personalities. Rhodes followed step by step, taking a food bag from time to time, watching Mira select ingredients for a while, and looking at the surrounding environment for a while. Some rotten vegetable leaves were randomly discarded near the vegetable stall, and the front of the seafood shop was wet, with small puddles of stagnant water scattered around. The smelly wind blows over, the dirty puppies run over, and the people shopping are bustling. This scene is very much like life. Road. Let's go. Next, we need to order some wine. The pleasant voice came, and Rhodes woke up as if from a dream. In front of him was the familiar smiling face, and his heartbeat was quietly accelerating. He always felt that this smile was far away from him before, but now it suddenly felt very close. What, are you tired? No, let's go. We, is such a good word. He just, suddenly had a little unrealistic idea. After entering August, the weather seems to be a bit hotter. The greening of magnolia is very good, trees can be seen everywhere, which also leads to the endless chirping of cicadas. You may feel good listening to it when you are calm, and feel that this is what summer should be like. But when I'm not in such a good mood, I just feel annoying. The ceiling fan in the guild was spinning slowly, bringing a breeze that was better than nothing in the noisy tavern. In this hot weather, Rhodes felt that even everyone's noisy voices were filled with heat. In fact, there were many people in the tavern who were as hot and lazy as Rhodes. In severe cases, they were unable to speak, and only a few sips of cold beer could alleviate the problem. At this time, Gray became one of the most popular people. Even though he was sweating profusely due to the heat, he still couldn't resist everyone's entreaties and became a ruthless ice-making machine. But this is also good for him, even if the people who receive his favor are embarrassed to remind him to put on clothes. Of course, these people do not include Natsu. This guy is completely unaffected. Even in this heat, he still has the energy to run around and even do some weird dances occasionally. Mira brought an empty glass, put a few ice cubes on it, poured a drink and pushed it to Rhodes. You don't seem to be in good spirits. Thank you. Rhodes said with a grimace, I didn't sleep well last night. It was too hot, and the mosquitoes were very noisy. The mosquito repellent left over from Goodman's move just ran out, and Rod reminded himself to buy a new bottle after get off work. Mira showed sympathetic eyes, that's hard enough. Why haven't you seen Worm in the past two days? I don't want to come out because the weather is too hot. 
I'm an unloyal guy and hide in the howling abyss to escape the heat. Rhodes picked up the cup and put it on his forehead. The cold touch made him feel better. I suspect that things may have been unfavorable recently, and even the increase in magic power is not as obvious as before. That's of course, because your magic power level is already very good. Of course, the same increase is not as obvious as it was at first. Can I be considered good like this? At least Jed and Marcus are completely inferior to you. Nira covered her mouth slightly, feeling that saying this seemed a bit rude to Jed and the others. When Rhodes first obtained the stone beetle, it was already a headache for Jet, not to mention that his magic power has increased a lot now, and he also has the, three wolves. Three wolves is the common name of this wild monster combination, including two shadow wolves and a large shadow wolf. The shadow wolf is similar in size to a tiger, much larger than an ordinary wolf, and looks more powerful than an ordinary wolf, a bit like a saber-toothed tiger. The large shadow wolf is even larger and has two heads. When the three giant wolves leaned over and bared their teeth, their ferocious looks were revealed, and they clearly knew they were not to be trifled with. After many tests and sparring sessions with his companions, Rhodes determined that they were more agile than stone beetles and better at attacking. In addition to the basic bite attack, shadow wolves have a keen sense of smell that can be used for tracking, and are also good at sneaking and making surprise attacks in the shadows. As the name suggests, shadow wolves live up to their name. Although it seems weak in the game, its strength here is not bad, at least Kana can't hit them with cards as easily as it can against stone beetles. As for the magic power consumed to summon them, it is basically about three river crabs, which is similar to that of stone beetles. Now Rhodes can command the stone beetles and shadow wolves to fight at the same time. As soon as the fight starts, the one-on-one -on -one fight will immediately turn into a group fight, which is a huge advantage. The problem that followed was that Rhodes himself was more likely to be targeted as a breakthrough point. There are currently two most effective solutions. One is to ride on a river crab and run far away. The second is to follow the stone beetle to burrow into the ground and run as far as possible within the limited breath-holding time. The tactics are terrible, but they work. However, these can only cure the symptoms. If you want to cure the root cause, you still need your own strength. Continuously exercising your body and practicing fighting skills is one way, but it requires long-term persistence. Another way is to learn one or two ability-based magics, but this method. Rhodes asked. Everyone seems to only specialize in one kind of magic, why don't they learn more to cope with different situations? Wool and cloth. Because there is not enough time and energy. Mira said, whether it is learning magic or improving magic, it requires a lot of time and energy. If you learn many kinds of magic at the same time, you may achieve nothing for a long time. It is better to concentrate on studying a certain kind of magic. Imagine if you added one more kind of magic practice to your current schedule, would you still be able to squeeze out time? Rhodes thought for a while, meditation and physical fitness are the basis for becoming stronger, and they must not be given up. The proficiency of summoning magic is an important factor in reducing the chant words, and the time for this practice should not be less. Also, working hours. You can't just do nothing and wait for the guild to support you, even Nabu, who has never accepted tasks, occasionally works part-time to earn some food expenses. Other than that, it's time to read. When your common sense is almost complete, you should be able to use it to learn other magic. Now, squeeze in some time to sleep. No. Mira immediately objected. She raised her index finger to indicate the importance of what she was going to say next. Sleep is an important way to restore mental strength. You have mentioned your time arrangement before, right? That is already an exaggeration. If you reduce your sleep time to practice magic, you will run the risk of suffering from magic power deficiency. Rhodes has read about magic deficiency syndrome in books, and it is usually easily induced when magic power is overdrawn. Once the disease occurs, it can range from coma to sudden death, which is a very dangerous disease for magicians. Practicing magic because you are afraid of death, and practicing magic to death. That's too stupid. Rhodes responded seriously. I know. Just because you don't have time to practice now doesn't mean you'll have to prioritize things later. As long as the goals of this stage are completed, supplementing knowledge and shortening chance, there will naturally be time to practice other things in the future. 
he has only been studying for less than a month, so he can't rush it. Don't look so sad. I have a good news for you. Mira seemed to be relieved and put a stack of banknotes on the counter, dang dang dang, salary has been paid. So early. Rhodes was surprised and picked up the banknotes and clicked them. No more, no less than 120,000 J. He asked. No, I don't think I've been working for a full month. Mira thought for a while. I worked overtime on the purchasing day. Then, then thank you. I want to thank the guild for taking care of me, and I also want to thank Mira for thinking of a reason. Rhodes realized that this was not the hotel where he worked as a summer job, but the guild, the fairy tale. Mira waved to Lucky, who was chatting with her companions not far away. Rocky, come here and get your share. Here we come. Lucky took over her salary. She was a full-time employee and her banknotes were thicker than rods. I finally received a measure of the value of my time and labor. The value of time and labor, a strange expression from Lucky. Rhodes eliminated this phrase from his lexicon. It was already very hard to correct the common language and he didn't want to learn it. Lucky rubbed the banknote with her face affectionately. I can buy a few more, little cuties. Little cutie. Okay. Before the salary you just received has warmed up, you have to spend two-thirds of it to pay the rent. The disposable balance is only 40,000 J. Last month, the president borrowed 150,000 J from Rhodes. The reward for asking Shapiki to teach him the common language is 80,000 J, as well as the medical expenses for Ms. Perliuzika's treatment for his injuries. The president never mentioned asking Rhodes to step in for these two items, but Rhodes couldn't pretend he didn't know. I will repay 20,000 yuan this month first, and keep 20,000 yuan as living expenses. If this continues, it will take more than a year to pay it off. But the season will change in two months, and there will be a lot of things to buy, so it's better to save a little more and pay them back together. Quote. Rhodes took stock of his debts and the speed of making money, and the pressure immediately came back. Based on the combat capabilities of the Stone Beetle and the Three Wolves, the Toad and the Six Birds will be enough to handle low-difficulty crusade missions. Considering the possibility of unexpected situations, be cautious and wait for the red and blue buffs to come out before completing the mission. It's better to team up with someone else. Quote. Stimulated by the salary, Rhodes made a short-term plan for himself that was both urgent and stable. In fact, after being certified by the president, Rhodes can now take on many jobs, but he feels it is not safe and wants to practice for another month or two. In the tavern, Macau drank a few more glasses of cold beer to relieve the heat, and his voice became a little louder. Wakaba, you didn't get divorced secretly, did you? How is that possible? Wakaba wondered, why do you say that? Because I haven't heard you complain about your wife for several days. Macau felt that he was justified. Speaking of this, Wakaba became even more puzzled. I don't know why my wife has been so nice to me recently, as if she was back when we were first married. Apart from dressing up a little more rustic and getting a little fatter, there's really nothing to complain about. Quote. Macau burped the wine, and then took a few more sips. I thought you were in an unhappy marriage like me, why did you suddenly become so happy? How come you have an unhappy marriage? Kana interjected. Isn't your wife divorcing you because you only focus on work all day and don't care about home at all? I'm a man, why don't I make more money to support my family? Macau argued with a red face, and then his tone dropped again. And I have changed. Now I not only care about work, but also take good care of Romeo. I also want a happy marriage. Kana knew from the look on Macau's face that he drank too much and was too lazy to compete with him. She held her own small wine glass and reluctantly looked at the large wine barrel in the corner. Humph, I drank like that all day long, and even advised me to drink less. The drunken Macau was still asking Wakaba, tell me quickly, how did you do it? I told you I don't know. Rhodes looked at Mira and indicated with his eyes, thank you for your contribution. Mira smiled and said nothing. Kana saw that Macau was not willing to let go and was ready to drink and go crazy at any time, so he reminded him, have you encountered anything special recently? Something special. I encountered a robbery more than a week ago. Maybe you were scared that time. Wakaba said, as you know, the robbers were caught by Rod and Mira. In order to thank Rhodes, Wakaba also tutored Rhodes for several days. 
Rhodes benefited a lot from the rich experience of this old guild member. He was even willing to tell Rhodes which issues of, Sosara, were the best. Worthless information. Rhodes decided on the spot to write it down and sell the information to other romance batches later. Macau was still pestering him relentlessly. Wakaba was so annoyed that he finally had no choice but to take action to solve the problem. After get off work, Rod went to visit a daily necessities store. I originally planned to buy a bottle of mosquito repellent, but ended up buying a mosquito net. You have to buy the potion when you run out, but the mosquito net can be used forever, a money-saving tip from Rhodes. Rod, who was about to go home, remembered that Mira just reminded him that tomorrow is the opening day of Honey Dessert House, so remember to bring the experience coupon. So Rhodes walked to the clothing store. This money is still not saved. After leaving the clothing store, after walking a few steps, Rhodes turned around again and entered the barber shop. Not only can't I save money today, I have to add more. The sound of scissors clicking sounded above the head, and the hair fell in clusters. Rhodes stared at himself in the mirror and calmly thought about whether he was tempted or had a brain twitch. This doesn't seem difficult to determine. The problem is what he looks like in Myra's eyes. If you were to label yourself from her perspective, it would probably be newcomers, companions, occasionally needing care, more calm than Natsu and the others, practicing quite hard, etc. After counting for a while, Rhodes discovered that he was probably the same as other companions, and only had a basic affection for Mira. At most, it's because we work together every day, chat often, and become a little familiar with each other. Rhodes sighed, there is still a long way to go. By the way, I have a little more motivation to practice hard. Early the next morning, he stretched and hit the sandbags to stretch his muscles. Rod washed and prepared to go out. Tell yourself that you don't need to think too much at this stage and just get along as usual. But my body honestly changed into new clothes and tidied my hair for a while in front of the mirror. After finishing their daily work in the tavern in the morning, the two of them went out together. Fortunately, the president is here today, and Sally and Izzy are also here to work part-time. It doesn't matter if Mira and Rod leave temporarily. There was nothing except being a little uncomfortable with Lucky's hot look. From the look in her eyes, Rhodes could tell that Mira, who gossiped about others all day long, was going to be gossiped about by others today. Today, Mira was wearing a beige dress, with the hem just enough to cover her knees. Because the sun has not been very friendly since the morning, I also put on a sun hat with a big pink bow tied on it, giving me a youthful atmosphere. Rhodes didn't pay much attention to it before, but now he realized that Myra's head was just a little higher than his shoulders. The height is pretty good, ba ba ba. When walking side by side with her on the road, there is a faint fragrance wafting from the side. If it was before time travel, Rhodes would think it was the smell of shampoo, cosmetics or perfume. But he had seen from magazines that there were many magic products on the market for women, magic that could change the color of clothes at any time, magic that could emit various floral fragrances. Rhodes wasn't sure whether Mira used these, but, this dress looks good, and the fragrance smells good too. Mira seemed to be in a good mood, have you cut your hair? Well, I haven't repaired it in almost a month. I felt embarrassed to say that it was cut on purpose, so I had to find a reasonable excuse. By the way, I wanted to know her opinion, so I asked casually, is the haircut okay? Mira turned her head and looked at it for a few more seconds, it suits you very well. I feel more handsome. Really. Rhodes smiled, thank you. It's over, knowing that this compliment is probably just a polite word, but the joy in my heart can't help but surge up. It's over, it's over. Welcome. The person in charge of greeting guests at the entrance of the dessert house is a pretty girl. Rhodes' evaluation is that he is not as good as Mira. Can you two sit here? It was another cute waitress who guided the two of them to their seats. Rhodes' evaluation is that he is not as good as Mira. When passing by the cashier, the cashier lady showed a gentle smile. Rhodes' evaluation is that it is not as good as M.I. Alas, I'm on top. Calm down, calm down. I don't know if it's because it just opened, but the business of this dessert house is very good. After Rod and Mira sat down, there were no empty seats in the store. Most of the customers are girls, and a small number are male and female groups. 
There is soft music playing in the store, and the atmosphere is quite good. Iced coffee, hazelnut cookies, blueberry mousse cake. Mira ordered two desserts, and then showed a distressed look. Rhodes asked at the right time, what's wrong? I want to try the wheel puff too. Mira pinched her fat free waist under the table, but it feels like it will make me fat. Do magicians also have this kind of trouble? Rhodes thought for a moment, then I'll have some, and we'll eat alternately. What a good idea. Myra's eyes lit up, that won't take up the portion you want to eat. You know I like to taste a variety of different delicacies, and I don't worry about my body shape. It doesn't matter if I order more. Desserts are not what you eat. Rhodes felt that he exercised so much every day and didn't worry about calories at all. The waitress in charge of taking orders glanced at Mira enviously and quickly wrote down what she ordered, please wait a moment. The atmosphere here is great, no wonder it's so popular. Mira took off her sun hat and put it aside, smoothed the bangs on her forehead with her hands, put the rubber bands on her wrists on her hair, and resumed her usual hairstyle. In fact, the bangs look good when they are let down. Well, it's much quieter than in the guild. Rhodes didn't stare at her all the time. He glanced at the whispering couples and best friends in the store. I feel like this is a great place for afternoon tea, dates, etc. Mira triggered the passive gossip attribute. Ah, does Rod often bring girls to this store for dates? I'm not Loki. Rhodes believes that this kind of question must be answered resolutely and decisively. I didn't have any female friends that I was close to before, and I wouldn't go into places like dessert shops and coffee shops. Before college, I didn't dare to fall in love early, but after college, I played with my brothers every day. Cafe. Times. Internet cafe. Square root. Mira blinked. Why do you suddenly feel a little pitiful? Hello. Mira laughed. No wonder I didn't even dare to look directly at Kana at first. Please forget about this. Rhodes is now used to it, not just looking directly at him, but also fighting. Although you can't win. Please take your time with your dessert. The waiter brought two cups of iced coffee and a portion of exquisite desserts. Ah, the wheel puff is more delicate than I thought. Let's try this first. Mira took out the knife and fork, and Rhodes removed the plate. No. Hey. Why? I was made fun of, not happy. Mira laughed, put her hands together, and blinked her left eye slightly. How about I apologize? Well, I forgive you. Rhodes nodded calmly pushed the plate over, and looked out the window. Discharging electricity is too foul, so I have to look elsewhere to calm down. Then, Rhodes saw something familiar, stone statue. Hill. What? Mira had a small piece of snack stuck on her fork, but she hadn't put it into her mouth yet. She followed Rhodes' gaze and saw a mountain of suitcases and a petrified Urza. Mira put down her fork, Urza. Rhodes nodded. It seems that he was blocked by the clerk because there was no seat. Mira thought for a moment. Ask her to come in. Come squeeze in with us. Of course not. But it's so pitiful. Looking at her luggage cart, you can tell that she just finished her mission and rushed here without even returning home. All are companions. Rhodes sighed inwardly. Then I'll call her. Wait a minute. Mira stopped him. What's wrong? Mira covered her mouth and smiled. I want to see more. Urza is very cute like this dark belly. So Rhodes took a second look. The majestic Urza looked lost because of such a trivial matter. It was really cute and had a contrasting cute feeling. The devil in the dessert house finally invited the fairy queen outside the shop. Rhodes reminded her that there were no extra stools inside, but Urza immediately pulled one out of the mountain-like suitcase and took out a folding chair. It's not a style for daily use. Looking at the pictures and words on it, it looks more like a souvenir. It was obvious that she really wanted dessert. Rhodes and Mira were still sitting opposite each other, while Urza sat on the side and called the waiter to take orders. Strawberry cake, strawberry pudding, strawberry milkshake. I ordered a dozen of them, all strawberry flavored. Don't make your preferences too obvious. The waiter quickly wrote down the menu and left, giving Rhodes a scumbag look before leaving. This sister is too arrogant. Who dares to slander Urza? Mira was already chatting with Urza. Did the mission go well? You came back earlier than scheduled. Yeah. Urza clenched her fists and raised her arms, her eyes full of anticipation, because I've been looking forward to this store for a long time. Mira said, as expected of Urza, 
but when it comes to the work of the council, is it really okay to advance the matter without authorization? This, this. Urza also felt a little guilty, I hope the president won't be scolded. Rhodes asked curiously, what kind of mission actually involves the Senate? Does it need to be kept secret? Urza looked at Mira. In principle, it needed to be kept secret until the confirmation was completed, even to her companions. But now there is only the finishing work left, and that is Myra's final say. It doesn't matter if Urza's work has been completed. It will be published in the newspaper in a few days anyway. Mira said. It is a mission to assist the Senate in arresting all members of the Dark Guild Scorpion Tail. Doesn't the Senate have its own law enforcement team? Rhodes' common sense supplement plan was very effective. Yes, but the Council is a continent-wide organization, and there is only one branch in Fury. The hiding place of poisonous scorpion's tail is relatively remote, and troops cannot be mobilized quickly. Usually when encountering this kind of situation, the Senate will release assistance commissions to local guild alliances in various places, and then the local guild alliances will allocate them to specific guilds. Quote. I see, so this task was given to our guild by the local guild alliance. Rhodes speculated, is it because the guild has a high reputation in the alliance? Urza denied. No, it's because the president is too unlucky. Ha. The rewards for this type of commission are usually lower than tasks of the same difficulty, so as long as it is not a very dangerous task, the allocation method is determined by drawing lots by the presidents. As she spoke, Urza sighed, and our president. Mira smiled and continued. I often get the lottery. Rhodes. The unlucky president often gets tasks that are low paying but not low complexity. Since he can't do everything himself, he can only leave them to the children. The most ideal candidate was originally Laxus, but his character was really difficult to deal with. Therefore, Urza, who has a strong sense of responsibility and sufficient strength, would often stand up and resolve these matters for the president. Rhodes took a closer look and found that Urza's ability to speak well in the guild may not only be due to her strength. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Rhodes suddenly discovered a blind spot. Then what did Urza mean when she said the mission was completed ahead of schedule, is it what I imagined? Urza nodded. I just singled out the entire guild, it's no big deal. Quote dot 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 quote. Rhodes was silent, as if it was no big deal. Could it be that the outside is actually not as dangerous as you think? Rhodes hesitated and said, isn't it unsafe to do this? Well, the decision made in haste this time was a bit hasty. Urza reflected on herself seriously, but then said again. Because I'm so looking forward to the strawberry cake from this store, I really can't wait for the reinforcements. I will consider it carefully next time. Quote dot 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 quote. Very good, because I was in a hurry to go home and eat cake, so I just cleared a dark guild, which is very reasonable. Mira was not surprised at all, this was indeed Urza's style. Moreover, she has read the information about the poisonous scorpion tail, and Urza can definitely deal with it. The waiter quickly brought Urza's order, and the table was filled with small plates. Urza is immersed in the world of desserts, and from time to time she shows a cute expression that is completely different from usual. Rhodes thought about it secretly. Urza defeated the entire Dark Guild, and I was defeated by Urza. So my strength is about equal to that of a Dark Guild, and my logic is rigorous. Ha ha ha, low key, low key. Single quote. After finishing his dessert, Rhodes entertained himself. Urza pushed the strawberry cake she ordered in front of Mira and Rhodes, let's eat together. Rod asked, don't you like strawberry cake the most? That's why you have to share. Sharing with your companions will make the food even more delicious. Urza looked intoxicated when she said this, and her tone was almost perfect. Since it's Urza's wish, then eat a little more. Mira cut a small cake in half and gave it to Rhodes. Then the more Urza ate, the more she felt something was wrong. Speaking of which, why did you two come here together, could it be, a date? Before Rhodes could respond, Urza's face turned red and she was speechless. You, you, what, when will you get married? PFF. Rhodes covered his mouth and almost sprayed coffee on her face, you're thinking too far. No, isn't it. It's just that Wakaba's wife gave us two hospitality coupons. Mira explained, then put her face in one hand and said with a bit of a smirk. Ah but it seems it can be counted as a date. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Urza continued to stutter. Mira smiled even more happily. Shy Urza is also very interesting, but it's a pity that Rhodes doesn't even blush, so it's not as fun as before. Rhodes breathed a sigh of relief. A month of experience has made him thick-skinned, for his ability to accept things has become stronger. The most important thing is, when I went out today, it seemed that I had the attitude towards a date. Now that Mira said it in a teasing tone, she couldn't be shy at all. Next, Rhodes discovered that Urza was a bit naturally stupid. When he and Mira had already talked about the next topic, Urza was still confirming with Mira whether it was a joke or not. After finally explaining it clearly to Urza, and after she finished eating her snacks, the three of them left together. Please walk slowly and welcome to visit us next time. The waiter at the door bowed politely, but Urza suddenly stopped and said to Mira and Rhodes, Wait for me. Rhodes asked, What happened to her? Mira thought for a while, Want to pack a few cakes to take back? Probably. A few minutes later, Urza returned, but her clothes had been changed into the uniform of a waiter in this store. Rhodes didn't understand the situation at all. A heroic female knight entered and a soft and graceful waitress came out. Transform into a living person. Welcome, two guests, what would you like to order? Urza bent down slightly, making a gesture of invitation, then straightened up and asked, how do you like? The girl in charge of greeting guests was already fascinated by Urza. Very. Rhodes' beautiful sentence stuck in his throat, so he changed it to, very suitable for you. Mira smiled and clapped. It's very beautiful, why did it suddenly change like this? Because I thought this dress was cute, I asked the boss if he could sell it to me. Urza tugged on the collar. Then she said it was not for sale, but as long as I worked here half a day, she could give it to me. Rhodes was a little stunned. So you agreed. Urza nodded matter-of-factly. That's right, so we have to start working. I'll ask you to help bring the luggage back to the guild first, right? No. Rhodes' head was buzzing. You're an S-class mage who earns around a million dollars per mission, but you sold yourself just for an ordinary uniform. Mira didn't mean to stop her at all, but was still encouraging Urza. Come on, leave the luggage to us. After all, it was he Shah who shouldered everything, not only pulling the luggage cart, but also carrying Rod and Mira. You don't understand. Urza's actions. Mira sat sideways, with her legs together and her skirt pressed tightly, like a mermaid. A little bit. Is this her character? She feels a little out of line and naturally stupid. Rhodes recalled Urza's expression, she seemed to be enjoying it. Mira said, I prefer to call it freedom and spontaneity. Urza just likes all kinds of distinctive clothes and also likes to try interesting careers. As for the reward, it is completely beyond her scope to consider. It is better to say that as long as you will be happy if you do that, it is the biggest reward. Compared with Urza, no, not just Urza, compared with most people in the guild, Rhodes, you look too worried and tense. I don't know exactly what you have been through and what worries and pressures you are burdened with, so I am not qualified to advise you to relax like everyone else. But at least today, at least that little time in the dessert house, I hope you are happy. Quote. The same bright smile as when they first met, the same gentle words as when they first heard her, word by word, poured into Rhodes' heart like a trickle. Soft and warm. Rhodes was sure that he had found the reason why he was tempted. Thank you, I'm, very happy. Every day I spend in fairy tale is a joy. I'm very happy today. The news that Urza was working as a waitress at the dessert shop spread like wildfire in the guild. This explosive message directly led to a significant decrease in the tavern's patronage. Most of the boys who often hang out in the guild choose to join in the fun, wanting to see what Urza is like as a waiter. Most girls, too. The people spreading this message, exclude Rod in the first place. Did you do it again? I only told Marcus. Quote dot dot dot. Wouldn't that be equivalent to telling the whole guild? I didn't expect that everyone is looking forward to Urza's service. Mira smiled, don't you want Rhodes to experience it? Spare me. Rhodes said, she almost strangled me with a bandage when she was pretending to be a nurse, and she was pretending to be a waiter. Will you smash the guest's head with a tray? Or trample the guest under your feet or something? Mira waved her hand, no matter what, it won't be so exaggerated. I hope everyone is okay. 
Rhodes prayed for his companions for a second, and then went to practice by himself while there were few people and few things to do. There are several dummies and wooden stakes placed in the corner of the guild's backyard. They also set up a shelf and hung up sandbags for boxing and kicking exercises. All the parts involving wood are kindly provided by Lucky's Wood Shape Magic. The reward was a simple diagram of a blood drop drawn by Rhodes. This thing should be regarded as a weapon or hidden weapon in martial arts novels, but because the hideous shape really resembles a torture instrument, Lucky likes it. I heard from her that she had already sent someone to modify the design drawings in detail and was ready to start manufacturing. Most of the time, Rhodes uses the training equipment, but occasionally other companions will be infected by Rhodes' diligence and go to practice when they have time. Especially the defeated Jeter, Troy and others. Originally, Rhodes asked Lucky to make two wooden dummies, but Natsu saw that Rhodes was making fun of them and insisted on giving them a try. Then only the wooden dummy remains. It doesn't matter if it's broken, but you can fight it casually. The sound of, dong dong, sounded from the backyard, and Rhodes became more and more comfortable with the combination of magic power and fists. Answer my call, Crimson Sharpbill. The crimson magic circle flashed past, and a large, five and six strange birds appeared in the guild's backyard. Cha, the largest bird raised its head and made a hoarse cry. Crimson Sharp Bill and Sharp Bill, commonly known as six birds, F6, etc. It is not a powerful wild monster in the game, but when compared to reality, the sharp beak has good penetrating ability. In addition, they also have a way to attack from a distance shooting feathers like flying knives. Small ones can only be shot one by one, while big ones can be shot in piles. Moreover, it wouldn't take long for the feathers to grow out after they were shot. Rhodes understood it as a skill CD and gave this move the name Feathers in the Sky. The shortcomings are that they can't fly very high. The wings of sharp bills are a bit smaller, so their flying ability is probably better than that of pheasants. The good news is that the big one can carry Rhodes for gliding or flying at low altitude, and thanks to their thick legs, their running ability is pretty good. Successful. Rhodes clenched his fists, feeling joy in his heart. It's not because he got six birds, but because the chant was successfully shortened. He reduced the long chant to only half a sentence plus a name, which was enough to cope with emergencies. I believe that after some time, Rhodes will be able to reach the level he pursues where he can successfully activate just by shouting a name. He felt the magic power consumption of summoning six birds. It was about three river crabs, which was not bad. Rhodes directed the sharp-beaked birds to perform some simple movements, and then summoned the three wolves, trying to get them to cooperate with each other and rush in and out. After that, they summoned stone beetles to try to form a formation that was both offensive and defensive. After rehearsing for a while to allow the magic power to be consumed to a level that would not affect normal actions, Rhodes returned to the tavern. The Urza incident a week ago has passed without any casualties. Fortunately, there were no casualties. However, the news that the Dark Guild's scorpion tail was wiped out appeared in the Wizards Weekly. The council was very honest and openly admitted that it was Urza's work alone, without any intention of taking credit. Although he was slightly dissatisfied with Urza's unauthorized actions, he also praised her abilities. As expected of Urza. This was the comment of most of the companions. That guy is getting more and more terrifying. This was Gray's feeling. He even took the initiative to check whether he was wearing any clothes. Scorpion's tail, isn't it a regular guild? Nabu's question silenced the area. It seems like it's true that Urza took action against the regular guild. No, no, the council is involved in this matter, so it's impossible. Marcus was very happy to explain, Scorpion Tail was recently classified as a dark guild. Because in order to make money, they secretly helped some big businessmen suppress their competitors by kidnapping and coercing them, which was only exposed some time ago. Quote. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief, but their hearts immediately became anxious again. Help. Everyone in the guild, including Rhodes, heard this voice. It's so scary. Someone come and save me. The same voice sounded again. Rhodes suddenly realized that the voice did not come from outside, but sounded directly from his mind. Before he could ask questions, Mira said seriously, Warren, this is Warren's, talking, magic. You can directly send what you want to say to others through the air. 
Rhodes was not familiar with Warren. He only remembered that the man had strange side bangs and liked to be alone. Others have also heard it. It's Warren's voice. He's asking for help. Are you in danger? But didn't he go on a date with his girlfriend today? This is what Marcus learned when he talked to Warren yesterday. Where are you? Warren. Grace suddenly stood up, yelled and tried to talk to Warren. Others either yelled or asked inwardly about Warren's location, but no one received a response. Warren just kept repeating words like, scary, horror, and help. Loki pushed open the guild door from the outside with a bang, ran in and asked. Does anyone know what happened? Now everyone on the street has heard Warren's cry for help. It's going to cause a panic. It's an indiscriminate request for help. Urza couldn't sit still anymore, now that the president is away, I will take command for the time being. Everyone is ready to fight. Urza quickly assigned tasks, and some people set off immediately to prepare to maintain order and protect residents, some people were responsible for searching for Warren's location and preparing for rescue. Generally speaking, when a magician goes out, he should be responsible for all actions and risks caused by his actions. If others help without authorization, they may be regarded as looking down on the other person and hurt the other person's self-esteem. However, if he himself asks for help because of a crisis, then as a companion, he will do whatever it takes to rescue him. At least that's what Fairy Tale does. Rhodes was assigned the task of searching for Warren's traces by Urza. Mira will stay behind, and after the truth is found out, she will be responsible for comforting nearby residents, and in the worst case scenario, guiding civilians to evacuate. Urza gave the order, and the guild members took action quickly and spared no effort to do what they could. This is the first time Rhodes has seen the guild operating at high speed. This guild that bickers and fights every day has such strong cohesion. Answer my call, Shadow Wolf. Rhodes was infected by this atmosphere and summoned six wolves in one breath. In Summoner's Rift, there are two groups of shadow wolves, six in total. Urza, they have a strong sense of smell. If there is anything Warren has used, you should be able to find it quickly. If anyone needs to travel quickly, I also have swift crabs. Quote. Nabu said, I know where Warren's home is. Come with me in groups. Mira also said, there may be something left by Warren in the guild. I'll go look for it. It helped a lot. I thought I couldn't use my sense of smell to track him when Natsu wasn't here. Urza said, that's it, we split up. Okay. Rhodes separated a group of shadow wolves to follow Nabu, leaving a group with Mira to look for things in the guild. It's so high, so scary, help. The people responsible for the search took a sudden action and narrowed the search area to a relatively high place. On the one hand, Rhodes was worried about Warren's safety, but on the other hand, he was relieved that he could help. But this relief completely disappeared within a few minutes. Other companions also put down their worries and even wanted to give Warren a beating. Because. I'm saved. I'm finally off that suspension bridge. I'll never date at such a high place again. Oops. Could it be that my, talking, has always been. Warren's voice stopped abruptly. There were scoldings inside and outside the guild. Warren. You are you kidding us? I can't spare you. Is it fairy tales magician again? What are you doing again this time? I also said it's rare for them to be quiet for a while. It's too much to pull a city-wide prank like this. All kinds of voices sounded throughout Magnolia, and the denunciations of people on the streets could be heard in the guild. Urza covered her forehead with one hand. Thanks to her majestic command of everyone just now, this was the result. Mira stopped flipping things around, and the smile returned to her face. Ala ala. It's a big deal again this time. Rhodes had mixed feelings. So, Warren went on a date with his girlfriend on the suspension bridge, and then because of fear, the magic went out of control and the whole city heard his voice. Urza nodded. Ah, that guy seems to be severely afraid of heights. Quote dot 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 quote. This matter was so ridiculous that Rhodes couldn't believe it. Because this kind of thing affects the whole city, our guild will not be demolished by the residents, right? No, no. Mira waved her hand, this kind of thing is not uncommon. There is an even more exaggerated uncle in the guild. When he comes back, the whole city will be turned upside down. But I still have to apologize properly and strive for everyone's understanding. I will go find him now. Urza's eyes became sharp 
Road, Swift Crab. Ah, okay. Rhodes summoned the river crab, it's similar to riding a horse, using the tentacles as reins. I know. Urza jumped on the crab's back, flicked the reins, and the crab carried her out of the guild gate quickly. Rhodes thought about Urza's scary look just now, Warren won't be hacked to death by her, right? Mira said, it shouldn't be hacked to death. Does that mean he will be hacked? Rhodes found that his common language had improved again, and he could easily understand the meaning of Myra's words. Moreover, if something like this happened, even if he wasn't hacked to death by Urza, he would still be killed, right? Rhodes imagined himself crying in the heart of the city because of his fear of heights. If Tasha's dead, how can we go out in the future? Out of concern, Rhodes decided to connect to He Crab's vision and prepare to see Warren's status. He Crab's vision came into his mind, and the scenery, in front of him, was rapidly moving backwards. It was obviously Urza driving He Crab forward at full speed. A second later, Rhodes took the initiative to cut off the line of sight. The angle of view of He Crab is relatively wide. Forget it if I didn't think of it just now. If I read it further, it's a bit rude. Wish yourself the best of luck, Warren. The town-wide prank incident had quite a negative impact. On the day of the incident, Urza and Mira came forward and took Warren to explain and apologize to many citizens. After the president came back, he even went to the city hall in person. However, both the mayor and the citizens were very tolerant of this matter. It's just a message in the hearts of the people in the city, it's not like it's destroying the whole city. Single quote. According to the gossip spread by Non Mira, the mayor said this when he met with the president. After the citizens complained for a few days, the incident became a joke. You know, fairy tales magician the other day. The citizens had more to talk about after dinner, which also added a serious misdeed to this guild that likes to play around. Even Brother Goodman couldn't help but ask Rhodes what kind of magic was that day and what kind of person Warren was. The matter is barely settled at this point. But since then, Warren has not appeared in the guild for quite some time. When he had no money at hand and had to take on a task, he would hide in a corner outside the union and use, reading words, to whisper to Mira quietly. Mira will carefully select tasks that are suitable for Warren, and then find a way to send the task list out. Well, this is what Mira told Rod. Because it was Rod's Shadow Wolf who was responsible for delivering the task orders. A few days ago, Urza used the, fast, characteristic of the Tianhe crab to catch Warren. Now the Shadow Wolf's, good at sneaking, and, sensitive sense of smell, characteristics are used to find Warren and secretly send him a task list. Originally, I wanted them to help rescue Warren, but now it's better. Rhodes shook his head slightly, no matter how it was used, it was used anyway. Since the phased goal of shortening magic chanting has made breakthrough progress, Rhodes has spent more time reading the magic encyclopedia recently. He is choosing a magic that suits his, minor. Of course, to be on the safe side, you should consult the president before starting to practice to see if there is any danger. As long as most magic is practiced step by step and there is no problem with the, property, there will be no danger. This is what the president said. The so-called compatibility is easy to understand. It is probably the talent suitable for a certain kind of magic. It often determines the entry threshold and future height of a kind of magic. As for how to confirm phase nature, generally speaking, those who can awaken on their own are the most suitable. For example, when Urza was a child, she suddenly mastered magic in a moment of crisis. If you fail to awaken on your own, you can only choose the magic you are interested in and try to see if you can get started quickly. Rhodes has already selected several targets of interest. When it comes to minoring in magic, the first thing Rhodes thinks of is Levy's three-dimensional text magic. Levy, who uses three-dimensional text magic, likes to study various characters, so will knowing multiple languages benefit this magic? Will the Chinese I master have good power? Just give it a try and you'll find out. Just recently, Levy also felt that there was nothing left to teach Rhodes about common sense in the world. When he mentioned that he wanted to learn three-dimensional writing, Levy immediately patted his chest and said that he would be taught and taught, and he would try it out for a month without any charge. Getting started with magic naturally starts with the most basic words. Levy's fingertips shone with golden magic light, his wrist moved gently, and words formed in midair. 
3D text fire. The golden magic light is in the text. The moment the words were written, they turned red and turned into burning flames, dancing in the air as Levy waved his arms. Rhodes picked up a piece of broken wood in the corner of the yard and threw it in. The wood immediately ignited. But when the glyph of, fire, was destroyed, it became increasingly difficult for Levy to control it. After maintaining it for a while, the flames dissipated, leaving only a piece of charcoal falling to the ground and continuing to burn. 3D text water. Levy waved his hand again to write the word water, extinguishing the burning charcoal. Three-dimensional text magic is a magic that uses words written with magic to mobilize elements or other forces that are not good at mobilizing. To a certain extent, those words are temporary magic props created by us. After completing this step, you can use them as holding magic. Quote. How can you explain it this way? Rhodes didn't know what to say. He originally wanted to learn the ability system, but Levy told him that it was half a possession system. Even if it's the same kind of magic, everyone's experience is different. That's just my opinion. Levy said, anyway, let's start with the first step, using magic to write words. Quote dot dot dot. Okay. Road nodded, he's here now, let's give it a try first. Levy explained in detail how to distribute magic power and how to make the magic power released through his fingers stay briefly in midair. Rhodes listened, memorized, and followed the instructions. If he didn't understand anything, he would immediately ask. Things related to spiritual practice must not be careless. While the two were teaching harmoniously in the backyard, there were also two pairs of eyes staring at them. Jed and Troy were picking at the door frame of the guild's back hall door, one on the left and the other on the right, each with their heads peeking out. Jet said angrily, that guy Rhodes is so cunning, he used the excuse of learning magic to pester Levy. Troy said, but, it seems that Levy went to him first to learn writing. No matter what, if this continues, maybe, we have to do something to make Levy understand our feelings. Troy thought for a while, then, challenge Rhodes and prove that we are better than him. You've already been defeated, in front of Levy. Jet said in frustration, how many wild monsters can you defeat? Troy touched the seed packet on his body, as long as he doesn't use stone beetles. Jet reminded, Rhodes recently got a strange bird. When he waved his wings, the sky was filled with feathers like flying knives. Troy hesitated for a moment. Well, as long as he doesn't use that weird bird. Jet added, he also has a kind of wolf that can touch you behind the scenes and knock you down while you're not paying attention. Well, as long as he doesn't use that kind of wolf. Jet sighed, it's better to let Rhodes tie his hands and feet to plan for you. Troy himself felt that it was a bit excessive, what can I do? How can anyone become so strong after practicing for more than a month? There is really no other way, so we have to do that. Jet turned around and left. Hey, Jet, what do you want to do? Be prepared and come back soon. Jet used his magic foot and quickly disappeared from Troy's sight. Levy pointed at the text that Rhodes had just written and said, the magic power is not evenly distributed here. Please control the output speed a little. Okay. Rhodes did as he was told. This word magic was slightly more skillful. Even if you want to use your strength to produce miracles, you have to have a continuous and consistent amount of vigor. Holding your breath and forcefully releasing magic power randomly will not work. After practicing for a while, Levy suggested that Rhodes take a break and review his previous mistakes before trying again. At this moment, Jeter burst into the backyard like a gust of wind and stood in front of Levy with his hands behind his back, his expression serious. Levy wondered, Jet, what's wrong? Jeter said seriously, Levy, I have something important to say to you. Oh, Rhodes retreated silently, lowering his sense of presence. He felt that there was something to eat. Levy seemed to realize something and followed his words and asked, what's the matter, so serious all of a sudden? Jet took out a bouquet of red roses from behind, bent down and brought the flowers to Levy. I like you, please date me. After Jet said this sentence in one breath, he closed his eyes, held his breath, and waited for Levy's answer like fate. Levy showed a slightly surprised expression. She only hesitated for a moment before taking a step back and twisting her two little hands together behind her back instead of picking up the flowers. I'm sorry, Jet, I don't have that kind of feeling for you. Thank you for your love. 
Rhodes was surprised to find that Levy, who had a weak personality, was very decisive at this time. It only took two seconds from the time Jet finished speaking to Levy's refusal. Sure enough, is that so? Jet said with difficulty, and when he straightened up, a stiff smile already appeared on his face. Sorry for troubling you. Jet held the bouquet in one hand instead, this can be regarded as an apology or a gift between friends. Levy still didn't reach out, just smiled and shook his head. Jet took back his hand and forced himself to smile. That's right, this is inappropriate. Then, I still have something to do. Jet turned around and left, leaving behind a fairly free and easy figure. Troy, who was observing secretly, was stunned by Jet's series of actions. First he was angry that Jeter had jumped the gun, then he anxiously waited for Levy's reply, and finally he felt bad for Jeter who was rejected. Of course, the discomfort was mixed with a hint of joy that, I have a chance. This hint of joy made Troy feel very guilty. They had been best friends since childhood, and the most important thing to do now was to stay with Jet. Jet, you. When Troy found the lost Jet, he found himself speechless. He can completely imagine how sad Jeter is now. At this time, everything is in vain, right? Unexpectedly, Jet actually patted Troy on the shoulder. It doesn't matter, I have thought of this result, but you, Troy, come on. What are you talking about? If you succeed, I will also bless you. Jeter said, we are still best friends. Jet. Rhodes, who hid in the corner with a melon-eating mentality, now felt that the melon didn't taste good because Levy seemed a little uncomfortable. I guess she was probably worried that this incident would affect her friendship with Jet. After all, the three members of the Lane Engine team grew up together. Hey, Rod. Levy asked in a low voice, did I speak too harshly just now? I don't know. Rhodes didn't have a childhood sweetheart, let alone a childhood sweetheart who has ever confessed to him. He could only think carefully and said, if you don't like emotional matters, it would be better to explain it clearly like you do, right? That's what I said. It was because Levy understood this truth that she refused so decisively. In the end, she didn't even touch the bouquet, not wanting any misunderstanding to arise. She sighed. I'm just worried that the Lane Engine team will be disbanded. We have always been good friends. We should think of a more euphemistic way of saying it. No matter how euphemistic it is, the meaning is the same. The longer it is delayed, the deeper the injury will be. Things have happened, no matter which is the best choice, Rhodes doesn't want to say things like, you didn't do it right, or, you just didn't think about it. That would do nothing except make Levy blame himself even more. The best choice is the one you just made. Levy needs to believe this before she can feel better. After that, wait until she calms down a little, and then help advise her on what to do next, if she needs it. However, something unexpected happened to Rhodes. Just as Levy regained some energy, Troy appeared again holding a bouquet of flowers. Compared to Jet, Troy's movements were slightly stiffer, but after taking two deep breaths, he still mustered up the courage to say the same thing as Jet. This time it only took a second for Levy to reject Troy. Troy was more embarrassed than Jet, dropped the bouquet on the ground, and left in despair. Rhodes had to shoulder part of the blame because he had just made Levy firmly believe that it was best for them to decisively refuse. After a while, Levy turned around and tried to control his emotions, let's continue practicing. Rhodes wanted to master magic quickly, but under such circumstances, dragging Levy to teach would be a bit. He thought for a while and said, well, I have consumed a little too much magic power today, so let's take a rest first. How about I buy you a drink? Just treat it as a thank you for your help. Quote. A few minutes later, Rod and Levy were sitting at the counter. The two of them clinked their glasses together, and just as Rod took a sip, Levy had already downed a glass, as boldly as if he was possessed by Cana. Good thing it's just regular beer. Mira noticed Levy's red eye circles, deliberately put her hands on her hips to look angry, and asked, Rod, are you bullying Levy? Absolutely not. Rhodes raised his hand and said, this, the situation is a bit complicated, and I can't say anything. It's none of Rod's business, it's just that I don't know what to do now. Levy's drinking capacity was a little bad, and his face turned red after a glass of beer. She poured out her troubles to Mila like beans from a bamboo tube, and she was obviously drunk when she spoke. Don't worry, 
Levy. Mira said softly, the three of you are good friends who grew up together and are partners in the same guild. No matter what happens, this feeling will last forever. It won't be long before Jet and Troy regain their spirits. Quote. Real. Of course. Then, have another drink. After drinking his second cup, Levy lay on the counter and fell asleep, occasionally murmuring in his sleep, moving his arms and kicking his legs. If this kid can drink more alcohol in the future, his wine may not be very good. Levy is wearing off-shoulder clothes, and the coat of arms on the left back shoulder is very conspicuous. Although it was summer, the ceiling fan was spinning. Rhodes wondered if he should cover Levy with something, but he had nothing on hand. Instead, Mira found a thin blanket and gently draped it on Levy. Rode has been caring about Levy since just now. Could it be that you also? Mira started again. No, even though Levy is cute, he's not my type. Then what type do you like? Myra's eyes were bright, and her eyes seemed to be burning with the flame of gossip. Rhodes really wanted her to have a taste of eating melon at his own home, but being impatient would ruin his big plans. Secrets make men more masculine. Rhodes altered a line from a detective anime. Confessing something like this is not a good idea for a charger, Jed and Troy just showed him. Hey, this is something only Loki can say. Mira said, has the relationship between you two gotten better? Not at all, he would run away within five meters of me approaching him. Now he and the people around him have to ask Lucky to take their orders for me. Quote. Rhodes was also helpless. His communication with Loki was limited to the last attempt at a discussion. After that, even if he wanted to ease the relationship, the other party would not give him a chance. Mira only knew that it was related to a female celestial spirit mage. Based on Loki's nature, she guessed that it was an emotional entanglement. He just didn't know what kind of sad experience it was that made him avoid anything related to the celestial mage. Rhodes' method of dealing with this is, if it can't be solved, don't solve it. There are some brothers who don't get along. It's normal for such a big guild to have a few people who can't play together. Out of the friendship of companions, when he has something to do, we will go to him. Lane engine formation. Levy suddenly raised his fist and shouted. Rhodes helped her put the fallen blanket back on. Is this a dream about the past? When did the three of them start to form a team? I don't know about this either. Mira thought for a moment. I remember when I first joined the guild five years ago, they often got together. Five years ago, you were only 12 or 13 years old, right? Joining the guild can be understood as a means of self-reliance, and she also brought a younger brother with her. Rhodes sounded a little distressed. 13 years old, it's not too early. Natsu joined the guild a year before me, Urza was another year earlier, Gray, Kana and Levy were even earlier. Mira looked reminiscing, we are all homeless children, and only by joining the guild can we settle down. Speaking of which, I have never asked Rod, what did you do before? I am a student. Rhodes said, I have been going to school since I was five years old until more than a month ago. For more than ten years, just going to school. Mira showed a surprised expression. Seeing Rhodes nodding, she asked. Were you a noble or a prince before? No, our country has no nobility and no royal family. Being able to study for such a long period of time should be due to policies, order, and productivity. Of course, family support is also important. Rhodes suddenly stopped talking. Except for the few days when he first arrived here, he didn't dare to think about these things, and he didn't want to mention them. The president told Rhodes that if he goes out more in the future, he might be able to find clues to the space magic that brought him here. If he can't find it, then the guild is his home. Just like Natsu, six years have passed since Natsu's adoptive father Aguniru, disappeared. Naz is still trying to find clues about his favorite family, but at the same time, he also has a new family. Rhodes didn't know the inside story about Naz, but he thought it was different from him. I may never have the chance to go back. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a dreamlike world full of magic, and there are many scenery waiting for you to enjoy. Single quote. Rhodes told himself this, and then devoted himself to work, reading, and spiritual practice. He put those things aside for the time being and worked hard to live. Mira had a hard time imagining what the country Rhodes described looked like. 
With a good life and order, even the children of ordinary families can go to school until adulthood. Being so privileged but without a king or nobles, is this possible? She did not continue to ask because Rhodes stopped talking when he mentioned his family. Without waiting for her to comfort him, Rode drank his glass of wine in one gulp, stood up and said, I'll leave it to you Levy, I'll go practice for a while. Mira nodded and only warned, remember not to overdraw your magic power. The days in August were very long, and when Rod came home from get off work, it was not getting dark yet. As he walked, he waved his hand to summon Worm, and rubbed the unfaithful guy hard to relieve his stress. Hululu, Worm made a disgusted sound. It was too hot and he wanted to go back to escape the heat. Wait a minute, have you grown up a little? Snoring. Worm looked confused. I feel like you were smaller than you are now when I first met you. We were together every day before, so I didn't notice it. Recently, I've been away from him a lot, and I realized that Worm was growing up. Don't leave in a hurry. I'll weigh you later so that I can have a comparison standard next time. Woo, Worm's pair of small horns hung down. It felt that the owner was retaliating against it, and the weighing was just an excuse. Rode. Two familiar people were waiting for Rhodes on his way home. Jet, Troy. What's wrong? Rhodes stopped. To be honest, he felt a little embarrassed when he saw these two people because he had witnessed the failed confession today. Troy was hesitant and speechless, but Jet was quick to speak. We are looking for you because of Levy's matter. Ah. Rhodes thought for a while, do you want me to keep it a secret for you? Jet denied. No, it's just that the confession failed. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Quote dot dot dot. Actually, it would be best if it could be kept a secret. Troy beeped quietly, but unfortunately Rhodes didn't hear it clearly and was glared at by Jet. Jeter got down to business. Here's what happened. Rhodes summed it up. So you went to confess your love recklessly today because I have been close to Levy recently, which makes you feel a sense of crisis. Troy added and it feels like every time Levy you look very happy. Of course I am happy. Don't these people know how happy studying is? You are overthinking it. Levy is just enjoying the joy of gaining new knowledge. She really likes things related to all kinds of words. Troy uncertain channel. Really? Rhodes said. You grew up with her, don't you know how much she likes to study characters? Like ancient characters and so on. Jet was a little embarrassed. While she was studying those things, the two of us were either sleeping or hiding far away. Rod rubbed Worm's horn and said with certainty. I'm sure Levy doesn't have the kind of feelings for me that you are worried about, and I don't have any feelings for her either. That's not the type one like. Jed and Troy wanted to cry a little, they seemed to have done something stupid. Cry if you want. After crying, think about how to deal with your relationship. Levy clearly rejected you. Rhodes said goodbye to the two people who were frustrated in love, feeling happy in his heart. Fortunately, these two are not messy guys, otherwise they might have to face such bloody plots as, I don't believe it, unless you can prove it to me, or, you can't get close to Levy unless you beat us. It's so easy to get along with this kind of person who speaks straightforwardly and makes things clear as soon as he says it. On the way back, Rhodes saw a watermelon stall packing up. He shamelessly carried worm and asked the boss to help him weigh it, and then did not buy any watermelon. Dot dot dot. Grandma, why are watermelons so expensive? When I make a lot of money, I will buy two at a time, eat one and throw it away. The guild will give one to my companions. Rhodes silently took note of worm's weight, bought some cookies that worm liked, and then returned him to the howling abyss to cool down. The schedule after get off work is still the same, exercising, hitting the sandbag, taking a shower, doing some housework, and then sitting at the table sorting out the information in the magazine. He had finished reading the nearly 60 magazines Lucky lent him last week, and he didn't want to return them yet. I originally wanted to make a collection of newspaper clippings, but unfortunately it wasn't my own. Rhodes gritted his teeth and promised to pay it back tomorrow. What he is currently browsing is the two weekly magazines of this month. He bought them by himself and spent about a few beers, which is still affordable. The Magisters, guild introduced by Sochala this week is Mermaid's Heel, a guild with only female members. It is said that this guild is very popular, and many male magicians have applied to join, but all of them have been rejected. There are also some people who don't listen to dissuasion and go to the guild every day to fight. 
As a result, he was knocked unconscious by the members of Mermaid Heels, put on a small skirt and heavy makeup, and was tied up at the entrance of the guild for a day and a night. After that, the magicians basically reached a consensus that they should not underestimate Mermaid Heels just because they only have female members. Not to be provoked easily. The focus is on the genius mage Kagura, who is proficient in swordsmanship and gravity magic and outshines all peers in the guild, and is expected to become the backbone of the mermaid's heel in the future. The standard princess haircut paired with a sword reminded Rhodes of a woman named Mei Yi. Looking back on the past, Rhodes thought he had passed the stage of liking paper people. He silently wrote down the information about mermaid's heel and Kagura, put down his notebook and began today's meditation. Magic power plus one plus one plus one. The time spent practicing is fulfilling and enjoyable. Levy's confession has not spread widely yet. Because although Mira likes to spread gossip, she still has a sense of proportion and is unwilling to hurt the feelings of the three people. Rhodes was still learning three-dimensional text magic from Levy, and was also quietly paying attention to the three people's reactions. After all, the cause of the matter had a little bit to do with him. In the week after that, Jet and Troy didn't go to any work, but often whispered in the corner. Jet wanted to say something to Levy several times, but he was held back by Troy, who was trying to figure out how to say it without being embarrassed. Levy didn't go to see either of them during breaks, but often sat at the counter and chatted with Mira. Even his eyes often drifted in the direction of Jet and the others, worrying about how to break the embarrassing situation. Rhodes was wondering whether to speak clearly for them, but he was worried that it would make the atmosphere more awkward. However, Mira suddenly showed a distressed look while chatting with Levy, and sighed lightly. Levy naturally couldn't help but ask, what's bothering Sister Mira? A little bit. Mira said calmly, the weather has been too hot recently, and everyone has become lazy, so there are a lot of commissions backlogged here. If it is not dealt with, the guild's ability may be questioned. Quote. Hey, is it so serious? Levy felt a little guilty. She was one of the people who hadn't gone to work for a long time. Mira pulled out an order form from under the counter. Yes, especially this one, the task of going to the orphanage in a neighboring town to be a tutor for the children. If no one goes there, the children will be disappointed. Levy quietly glanced at a corner and replied, If you want to help the children with their homework, can you just find an ordinary teacher? Mira said, because more than half of the children wish to become wizards, the orphanage wants to invite some teachers who know magic to come there. Myra's pleading look made Levy unable to bear to pretend that he didn't understand what she meant. The task of being a teacher is very suitable for her, and then think about how often she is taken care of by Sister Mira. After hesitating for a while, Levy asked, well, what does the client want from the teacher? In addition to basic requirements such as patience and attentiveness, the client hopes that the teacher can teach the children writing and history, and can accompany the children in sports and games. Ideally, you can also teach them about plants and gardening skills. Mira smiled, as if her plan had succeeded. Sister M.I., Le, stop joking. Levy pouted. What's the difference between this kind of request and a direct roll call? It was clearly made up by her. No kidding, the client's requirements are clearly written. Mira showed the details to Levy. Just think of it as helping to deal with the backlog of tasks. It's obviously appropriate. Let me tell Jed and Troy. There is such a tailor-made mission. Levy hesitated for a while, and finally nodded. Mira went to Jed and Troy to explain the situation. Rhodes saw the two people were obviously stunned for a moment, and then showed happy expressions. Just when Levy looked over, the three of them looked at each other, awkwardly moving away, but couldn't help but move back. Mira thoughtfully helped them make arrangements to gather at the entrance of the guild tomorrow morning and set off. Jed and Troy immediately went home to prepare. Levy came to Rhodes with the task list. Sorry, Rhodes, I can't practice with you tomorrow. It doesn't matter. I've memorized the basics. I'm sorry for taking up your time. Rhodes said go for the mission, and other aspects as well. Well, then I'll go back first. Bye. Rhodes accidentally saw the time on the task list. The commission date was yesterday and the deadline was a week later. It was a commission that had been, backlogged for a long time. Zhang Wuji is right, the more beautiful a woman is, the better she is at lying. Mira clasped her hands together and said playfully, 
I'm sorry, Rhodes, I sent your tutor away. Rhodes suddenly wanted to get angry. Yes, my heart was greatly hurt, so, is there any compensation? Nira blinked. What compensation do you want? Commit yourself to each other. Of course this cannot be said. Rhodes thought for a while and said, I have something to ask Mr. Cook. Can you go with me to help strengthen your courage? Looking for Mr. Cook. Nira asked doubtfully, what's the matter? Research plan on nutritious meal formulas to promote worms growth, Rod said. Rhodes had thought about finding a way to develop poro delicacies for worm before, but he had no time, no cooking skills, and no motivation, so he delayed. But last time he discovered that worm might have grown up a little, which made Rhodes pick up this idea again. Maybe poro delicacies can raise a poro king. The best cook he knows now is Mr. Cook, the guild chef. I just asked such a powerful chef to help me research, pet rations. I wonder if the other party would be angry. So the reason for asking Mira to go with you is. For a random excuse to do something with her or just be alone for a while. That's all for being brave. Even if Mr. Cook is really angry, the worst he can do is chase him down several streets with a kitchen knife, but he won't really be hacked to death. Rhodes' little calculations were rattling. Mira agreed without hesitation. For her, Mr. Cook was quite easy to get along with. The two walked around the counter together, walked into the aisle, and prepared to enter the kitchen through the side door. Rhodes summoned Worm. Come and help me see if Worm has grown up a little. Long time no see, Worm. Mira held the white dumplings in both hands, weighed them and made gestures, it seems to have grown up. Snoring, Worm said it was very hot and wanted to go back. Rhodes said, be patient for a while and go back later. Mira rubbed Worm's heart-shaped belly and smiled. I'll take you to eat something delicious. Hululu, Worm immediately became happy. The scene looked very much like a husband and wife, one tough and one soft, coaxing an ignorant child with two words. Mira looked more and more gentle as she hugged Poro. Come on. Fortunately, Mr. Cook did not take Rod's request as an offense. Instead, he was very interested in creatures like Poro. Even though Worm was so frightened, it always felt as if the uncle in front of him had just glanced at it and marked a dozen suitable locations on his body for the sword. It felt like he was about to be skinned, deboned and thrown into a stew pot any second. Rhodes tried his best to describe the appearance of Poro delicacies in his impression, and guessed several possible materials. We also listed the things Worm usually likes to eat for Mr. Cook's reference. Mr. Cook wrote them down one by one and said he would try them starting tomorrow. He felt that according to Rhodes' description, that thing could actually be eaten by others, and there might be another signature dish in the guild in the future. There was another small expense this month. Although studying gourmet food is Mr. Cook's hobby, Rhodes is always embarrassed not to pay for any materials. However, Worm also gained the power to enter and exit the kitchen at will when Mr. Cook was not busy. The prerequisite is that it cannot mess with things in the kitchen. This is Rhodes' twelfth day of learning three-dimensional text magic. After the mission recommended by Mira, the atmosphere between the lane engine team eased, and they soon agreed to go out to work together next time. Levy came to tutor Rod again whenever he had free time, and Jeter and Troy occasionally came to watch the fun. However, the past two weeks of study have made Rhodes realize firsthand how important, compatibility, is. He could use summoning magic almost immediately, but the learning results of three-dimensional text magic were really unsatisfactory. The same fire is written, Levy releases blazing flames, and Rhodes releases probably a torch. When writing the same water, Levy releases a large amount of clean water, which can have a good impact. What Rhodes released can wash his face. Don't even think about using this level for fighting, but Rhodes plans to learn a few more words that can create light, wind, etc. At least life will be much more convenient. You won't need to light a lamp when you get up at night to go to the toilet, or you won't need to bring a fire when going out for a picnic. Congratulations. In contrast, the progress of summoning magic is as stable as ever. This time Rhodes felt that there were new wild monsters that could be summoned, so he asked the president to help look after them as before. The results confirmed one thing, it is indeed correct to be more stable. Answer my call, Demon Swamp Frog. The magic power that could summon nearly four river crabs was drained away by the pendant, and a huge brown toad appeared in the guild's backyard. 
The appearance of this toad can be described as ugly. It has a huge body that can swallow a person in one bite, and there are several purple mushrooms growing on its back. At a glance, you can tell that it is definitely poisonous. Quack, along with the loud croaking sound of the frog, the land under the feet of the demon swamp frog was dyed purple. The next second, Rhodes felt himself being grabbed by a big hand, and his body quickly retreated. Then the president appeared in front of him, clapped one hand on the ground, and golden light emitted. The demon swamp frog and the land under its feet were surrounded by a golden magic circle, and golden spells rose from bottom to top, forming a protective shield. The demon swamp frog seemed to want to take off, but Rhodes gave it a, don't move, command to calm it down. President, what is this? It's venom. This will prevent it from spreading further. The president looked at the purple ground and said seriously, will it obey your instructions like other wild monsters? It should be okay. Rhodes could feel the connection between the demon swamp frog and himself, raise his left front paw. The demon swamp frog raised its claws. Move one step to the left. The swamp frog did as he was told. Scream. Qua. It seems there is no problem. The president said, so is there a way to take back the venom? Rhodes ordered, take back the venom. No response. Rhodes thought for a while, eliminate the venom on the ground. The demon swamp frog retreated slightly and opened its mouth, taking a mouthful of dirt. It wanted to vomit but didn't dare. It looked at Rhodes helplessly. Ah, Rhodes suddenly felt that this toad was quite cute. After receiving the president's approval, Rhodes said, spit it out, be gentle. The president looked at it and saw that the spitted soil poison seemed to have been neutralized or partially absorbed. And the toad didn't pollute any new land when it just retreated. Well, Makarov thought for a while and said, don't summon it in the guild for the time being. Okay. Rhodes nodded and waved the demon swamp frog back to Summoner's Canyon. Makarov was very pleased. It was great that Rhodes was a stable child. President, what should I do with this land? I'm going to find Perliuzika's help to think of a way. If I can make an antidote, I'll take some with you, just in case. In fact, the easiest way is to scrape the ground and bury it deeply. But for the sake of long-term considerations, Rhodes cannot be prevented from summoning it forever. President, can you take me to visit Ms. Perliuzika? I haven't thanked you properly for what happened before. When she first woke up, she couldn't communicate. After learning the common language, the old lady went home long ago, and she never came to the guild again. Rhodes did ask Mira for the address of that lady, but was told that Lady Perliuzika didn't like to be disturbed. If she didn't have any business and went there rashly, she might beat her out with a broom. Preparing the antidote should be considered business, right? You might as well go together, she might even want to see your demon swamp frog. Makarov waved his hand, his body flashed with light, and his casual clothes were changed into formal clothes. Rhodes had to admit that he was impressed by the old man's handsomeness. President, this dress-up magic is so handsome. Hee <laughs> hee. The president smiled like an old child. How about it, do you want to learn? Yes, yes. Ah, I must learn one when I have time. Dressing up and transforming is a magical girl thing. Ah no, it's a magician's romance. Makarov was very pleased that this child finally had something to pursue other than becoming stronger. He took a glass to collect some venom-contaminated soil, used magic to protect it, and said, let's go. This was the first time I walked on the street with the president, if the time he carried me back didn't count. Are you still used to being in the guild? Fortunately, everyone is a very good person. They take good care of me and teach me a lot. Rhodes ignored the two rude S-class magicians, and everything was fine so far. As soon as Makarov smiled, he heard Rhodes continue. Apart from the fact that it is noisy at times, there are unknown objects flying past your ears, and there are often people breaking things that are difficult to clean up, there is nothing to complain about. Makarov covered his chest, feeling a little worried, if you want to learn common language, follow Mira or Levy, don't learn Urza's way of speaking. Urza is just like this, talking about everyone's shortcomings, and then saying, I don't want to talk about you today. Ah, guild master, I was just joking, don't worry. Rhodes was afraid of making the old man angry, so he hurriedly added, it would be nice to have more excitement in the guild. He tried to change the subject. By the way, President, Ms. Perliuzika lives in the eastern forest, right? 
Do you want to take the river crab? Makarov looked at the streets with people coming and going. Let's wait until we leave the city. Don't cause trouble to everyone. Oh, wait for me, I want to buy something. Rod ran to the fruit stand and came back a few minutes later with a bag full of apples and a bag full of peaches. It's not good to go empty-handed for the first time. Makarov smiled and said nothing. This is where I found you. The two entered the forest on a river crab and walked a certain distance. Makarov pointed to an open space. Rhodes didn't have much impression of this place. He thought everything in the forest looked the same. Even if I hadn't encountered that strange beast, I would have gotten lost and fainted from hunger here. Originally there were some messy footprints around here, but it rained several times in the past few days, and the specific shapes are no longer easy to identify. President, you said earlier that you were investigating the beast's rampage. Is there any result? Not at all. There has been no trace since that time. Makarov looked at Rhodes, but now I have a little guess. Well, me too. Rhodes said in a low voice, feeling guilty, if it was really caused by my magic going berserk, how much compensation would I have to pay? Seeing Rhodes' worried look, the president smiled and said, There is no need for compensation at all, because this area is an unclaimed land, and we cannot go to the king to pay a fine for such a trivial matter. Rhodes breathed a sigh of relief and almost faced a greater economic crisis. After walking some distance deeper into the forest, the two officially arrived at Perliuzika's residence, a tree house. Rhodes looked up at the red apples hanging on the trees around him, then looked down at the bag of apples he was holding in his left hand, and suddenly felt that he was a little redundant. President. Rhodes gave an ugly smile, why didn't you remind me? Ha ha ha. It turns out that you can also show such an expression. It's so funny. Makarov laughed out loud, like an old naughty boy. After he had laughed enough, he said, it doesn't matter what the gift looks like, as long as it comes from your heart. It's so noisy. The door of the tree house was opened roughly. I can hear your annoying laughter from a hundred meters away. Makarov, can't you be quiet? Makarov greeted with a smile. What's wrong with being lively once in a while? It's quite deserted to live here alone, isn't it? Perliuzika noticed Rhodes. Your injuries should have been healed by now, right? Rhodes quickly said, yes, because I heard that you like to be quiet, I have never dared to disturb you. Thank you for your help and care. Huh. Perliuzika was surprised that Rhodes spoke so fluently in common language, but she didn't ask in detail and only said. Now that you know, go back quickly. I said I hate humans. Don't be so heartless. This kid asked me to bring him here because he wanted to thank you. Makarov said, well, I even brought you a meeting gift. Perliuzika saw the red apple at a glance and glared at Makarov, humph, the children adopted by fools are also fools. After speaking, she turned around and entered the house, but didn't close the door. Rhodes was a little embarrassed by what she said. But Makarov knew that what she was humming was not Rhodes, but his boring behavior of entertaining children even though he knew there were apple trees here. Don't worry, that's how she talks. Makarov got used to Perliuzika's way of expression, let's go, just invite us in without closing the door. Sunere. No, 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 that's too rude. Rhodes condemned his behavior of slandering his benefactor without authorization and followed the president into the tree house. The space in the tree house is not large, and the furnishings are also very simple. There is almost no place to stay after entering. The ground was filled with flower pots filled with herbs and bottles containing various potions. The furnishings in the room only include a bed, a desk, bookshelves and cabinets taken out from the wall, and the stool only has a wooden pier. Rhodes looked left and right, not knowing where to put the things in his hands. Perliuzika looked at the bottle in Makarov's hand, are you here for the thing in your hand? Makarov nodded, yes, here is some soil stained with poison. I want you to see if there is a way to solve it. Perliuzika immediately asked, has anyone in the guild been poisoned? No, I'm just preparing for a rainy day. Makarov explained the cause of the incident, and at the end he praised Rhodes, this kid is very stable. Humph, another idiot who only knows how to pursue power. Polyuzika took out a petri dish with a look of disgust, put a little soil in it, and dripped one kind of medicine into it. Rhodes didn't care about Polyuzika's attitude. This old lady probably said such things because she had experienced something. 
For example, the companion pursues power too much and ends up hurting himself. After a series of professional tests, Polyuzika confirmed the role of this toxin. When exposed to toxoid, it will quickly penetrate into the panel. There will be a stinging sensation initially, followed by paralysis, and movement will become sluggish. If the poisoning lasts for a long time, the toxin will destroy the function of internal organs, and in severe cases, it may lead to death. Low temperature can reduce the spreading speed. After high temperature baking, the toxicity will decrease to a certain extent, and the effect of inhaling a small amount of the volatilized gas is not obvious. Quote. After detailed inspection, Perliuzika went outside and found a place to ask Rhodes to release the demon marsh frog. She needs to collect some more venom samples, samples of the oral secretions of the demon swamp frog, and study the mushrooms on its back. Get the antidote in a few days, but don't abuse this monster until then. Yes, thank you. You don't need to come. Makarov is asking for trouble. Let him do it himself. Oh, okay. Rhodes originally wanted to say that he was the one who caused the trouble, but after carefully studying this sentence, he felt that something was wrong. Trouble, may refer to him, so the president is the one causing trouble. There seems to be no way to refute it. On the way back, Rhodes looked sad. Makarov asked, do you care about what poor Yuzika said? No, Ms. Perliuzika, how should I put it? Although she has been complaining, the things you asked her to do were not perfunctory at all. He should be a nice guy with a sharp mouth but a soft heart. Rhodes shook his head, I'm worried about other things. It seems that I've overspent on my living expenses this month. Quote. The money to buy meat and Greek gifts, the ingredients for research and development of Poro cuisine, some clothes bought some time ago, and a few pieces of fitness equipment. The money in my pocket always slips through my fingers unknowingly, and there are still nearly two weeks until the salary is paid. Before time travel, it would have been solved as long as he skipped breakfast every day, but that doesn't work now. Skipping breakfast will definitely affect training. You, it's about time you try to accept commissions, right? Makarov said helplessly, if you continue like this, you will become the second Nabu. Nabu was actually more determined than Rod because he refused to be a waiter. Actually, I want to give it a try, but the hourly wages for commissions in the city may not be as good as those in the Guild Tavern. Commissions outside the city. Rhodes looked confused, I always feel that I am not strong enough and it is not safe to go out like this. It's good to be cautious, but now at least half of the people in the Guild are no longer your opponents. The President sighed. Give yourself more confidence, you are strong. Magic comes from the power of the heart. If you don't even believe in yourself, the magic will become weak. Rhodes was shocked, so even if I keep practicing hard, there is a chance that I will become weak after I go out. Is this the point? Makarov couldn't help yelling at Rhodes, go back to Mira and help you choose a suitable mission. Makarov suspected that Rhodes might have suffered sequelae after being attacked by a ferocious beast. It was necessary to let him go out for a walk to develop his confidence and add some common sense from outside books. Oh. Rhodes nodded reluctantly and thought about it rationally. There was no need for the president to lie to him, and there was no reason to cheat him. Maybe it's time to go out for a walk. To be more prudent, Mira must choose a safe mission, and it's best to form a team with others. Mira had just registered a mission for Macau, and heard the president tell him the whole story. In other words, the president took advantage of Rhodes' financial difficulties and persuaded him to take on the mission. Don't make it sound like I'm driving him away, but that's pretty much it. Makarov said, help me choose the right one. Mira looked at Rhodes. What kind of mission does Rhodes want to try? It's best to have a high safety factor, to be able to travel not too far away, not to be delayed for too long, and the reward is still. At this point, Rhodes paused, well, isn't that too much? So you know. Makarov sighed and jumped off the counter deftly, forget it, you can decide for yourself. Rod was like a graduate interviewing for a job for the first time. In the president's eyes, ordinary work was just like that, but Rhodes felt uneasy that he didn't know the specific work content, what to do specifically, and what to do if he didn't do it well. Actually, you don't need to pay too much attention to the president's words. Mira didn't want to persuade Rhodes to accept the task. In her opinion, there would be no harm in practicing for a while longer. Everyone in the guild is free. 
Even if Nabu is like that, the president will not force him to go out. I just don't want to be like that, and I can't always live on borrowed money. Rod said. Please help me choose one that is within my capabilities. It should be fine if I make more preparations. Okay, Mira can see Rhodes practicing every day and knows his strength very well. However, for the first mission, it is best to familiarize yourself with the process and have a little training effect. Well, take care of the newcomers a little bit. Mira pulled out a task list. That's it. Rhodes looked over and saw, wanted, written on the top of the task list, and, it was blank below. Empty. Well, because there is a commission for today that I haven't had time to write down. Mira picked up the pen, leaned on the counter and started writing one stroke at a time. Today's commission. You should publish it when you and the president are out, right? Rhodes' eyes followed the movement of her pen tip, and lines of delicate handwriting appeared. Escort mission. The client is required to escort the client to Rockers, the capital of the Kingdom of Fury, and return safely. Remuneration. 20,000 J. Scheduled departure time. 8 a.m. on August 23rd. Commission time. August 22nd. Going to Rockers. Rockers, the capital of the Kingdom of Fury, is also known as the capital of flowers and is the most prosperous city in the country. Of course Rhodes understood this important common sense. If you want to go to Rockers, you can take a horse-drawn carriage heading west from Magnolia and you can arrive there on the same day. It's even faster to take the canal waterway down the river. The key is that regardless of land or water, the most commonly used routes are similar to, official roads, and, national roads. Even civilians can travel back and forth without worries, and the safety factor is quite high. In other words, taking this route requires hiring a magician as a guard, which means that the client is being targeted. Either life or property. This will add many uncertain risks to the trip. Rhodes thought, he had to figure out why the client was being targeted before he could decide whether to accept it or not. However, just after he made a well-founded analysis, the pen tip in Myra's hand moved lightly and wrote the last line. Client. Mirajan Strauss. Rhodes raised his head. Ah. Mira looked at him and asked with a smile. Ah what? Mira, this. Rhodes didn't know what to say. Is this creating a task without a suitable task? Mira said. I really want to go to Wadu tomorrow, and I just want to find someone to go with me. You just need to say this, and the people in the guild who are willing to accompany you can line up from the counter to the door. Ah, he is very good at complimenting people. Mira asked with a smile, as Rhodes one of them. Of course, after all, I have always been taken care of by you. Rhodes said, there is no need to release a special commission. Mira raised a finger and shook it slightly. Don't worry, under normal circumstances, when an inexperienced newcomer goes out to work for the first time, the guild will arrange for a senior magician to accompany him. In order to help newcomers familiarize themselves with the work process and handle emergencies. As for me, I can be considered a senior mage. Although I can't fight, you can ask me any questions during the mission. So, Mr. Rhodes, Fairy Tales Wizard, do you want to accept this commission? Quote dot dot dot. I accept it. Rhodes smiled, his good intentions should not be let down, but he felt like he was being given free reign. Then, as the president's assistant, I agree with you to accept this commission. Mira deliberately spoke in a very formal tone. She took out her seal, stamped it on the order form, and filled in some information in the register. This means that the commission has been approved by the guild and officially handed over to Rhodes. Mira handed the stamped order form to Rhodes. Okay, now you can take this to see the client, Miss Mirajan Strauss, and confirm the details of the entrustment. Quote dot 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 quote. Rhodes took the order form, his eyes stayed on the red seal for a second, and then looked up at his, client. Myra's eyes met his, and she immediately changed into a very girlish look and tone. Ah, are you the magician of fairy tale who is responsible for handling my request? I'm sorry, but in order to confirm your identity, can you let me see the order form and your guild crest? Why do you even use honorifics? Is this so dramatic? Rhodes nodded mechanically, handed back the order form he had just received, and lifted up the half sleeve of his left arm to show his coat of arms. As expected, it's fairy tales magician. I was so rude just now. Mira folded her hands together and bowed lightly with an apology. 
After hesitating for a moment, Rhodes chose to cooperate with her. You're welcome, Mira. Ms. Mirajan, you are going to Waduku Rockers, right? Have you made specific itinerary arrangements? Mira said cautiously like an ordinary girl. Yes, the original plan was to set off by boat tomorrow morning and arrive in the afternoon. You need to spend the night in Rockers, then take a carriage back the day after tomorrow and return to Magnolia in the evening. May I ask, Master Mage, do you have any suggestions? Rhodes was made to feel uncomfortable by this pitiful, Master Mage. Please don't call me that. I have no objection to the itinerary. I just want to know why you hired a guard. Are you being targeted by someone? Mira shook her head. No, not really. I just think it's not safe for a girl to travel far alone, so I leave my safety to you on the road. Okay, I accept it. Rhodes gave the drama queen opposite him a questioning look, is that okay? Mira returned to her usual smile and stretched out a palm. 50 points, failed. What? Mira cleared her throat. Now is the guidance time for the senior mage Mirajan. First, if the attitude is too rigid at the beginning, it will leave a bad impression on the client, even scare the other party, and affect the reputation of the guild. Um, I'm sorry. Rhodes was not into the scene at first, and he was definitely stiff. Second, if you easily show the entrustment to the other party without confirming the identity of the client, you should at least ask the other party's name. This is true. Rhodes didn't even think of such a thing and directly assumed that she was the client. She was the client in the first place. Complain first, reflect later. Rod realized that Mira was telling him the standard procedure for connecting with clients, not just for fun. Thirdly, the remuneration issue may be subject to clerical errors and temporary changes. This is a matter that can easily cause disputes, so it must be confirmed in person. Okay, I remember it. Rhodes nodded, thought for a moment and added, thank you Miss Mirajan for your guidance. Great reading. Mira took advantage of the situation and put on airs. Well, your attitude is good, plus 10 points, I think you barely passed. Rode was about to say something when Lucky's voice suddenly came from beside her. She deliberately pinched her throat and imitated Rode's tone. Thank you Miss Mirajan for your guidance. Ha ha ha. Lucky and Sally, a part-time waiter, laughed together. Hey. Rode's ears felt hot, and he felt ashamed to be imitated by others. Myra's face remained as usual. Rachi, Sally, the tavern will trouble you tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Sally said. Don't worry, I'll catch Izzy tomorrow too. Lucky said. That's right, Sister Mira, just feel free to date. Mira corrected. It's work. Yes, yes, Lucky and Sally laughed and left with the wine ordered by the guest. This kind of teasing was neither painful nor itchy, and Rhodes didn't even blush. By the way, I haven't asked you what's going on at Wadu. The weekly Soshala is going to hold a celebration for its 15th anniversary in Wadu. Mira said. I received their invitation to attend tomorrow's party, and I will probably perform a show, such as singing a song. Oh, I understand, for large companies' annual meetings and anniversaries, they invite celebrities to perform to warm up the venue and increase cohesion and influence, right? Then I'll make some preparations. Rhodes said, the ferry. I have already booked the boat, and the carriage can be rented in Wadu. Mira said, Rhodes just needs to be prepared for the trip. As expected, it is a trip packaged as a mission, or a novice tutorial. You make me look stupid as a guard. Mira said, that's what the escort mission is like. As long as nothing happens, it's totally fine. Just relax. Quote dot dot dot. Fortunately, my common language has improved, otherwise I wouldn't understand what you are saying at all. No, we cannot rule out the possibility of accidents. Rhodes decided to be more vigilant tomorrow. I still have to prepare something. The next day, Rhodes and Mira met at the guild and set off on time. Mila wore a women's white long-sleeved shirt today, decorated with a narrow tie of the same color, which was simple, beautiful and sun-protective. The lower body is a yellow A-lined skirt, which not only covers the hem of the shirt, but also perfectly highlights the slender waist. A small shoulder bag of the same color as the skirt hangs on the waist. The light pink high-heeled thong sandals made her small feet and exposed ankles whiter and tenderer. After leaving the guild gate, Rhodes naturally took Myra's suitcase, leaving her free hands to put on the beige sunhat in her hand. 
Mira arranged her hair under the hat and asked casually, How are you? Do you feel nervous when you go on a long trip for the first time? Rhodes replied, I am accompanied by the senior wizard Miss Mirajan Strauss, so I am not nervous at all. Mira laughed. Then the client, Miss Mirajan Strauss, is relieved. The two of them played with yesterday's, internal jokes, like tongue twisters, talking and laughing. Mira noticed that Rhodes had to weigh his backpack after walking a certain distance, and asked. Speaking of which, what's in that big backpack? It feels heavier than my suitcase. Rhodes said. I will show you some of the necessities for a long trip when we get on the ship. There are also things prepared for you. Really? Then I'll look forward to it. There is no need to look for any ferry when taking a boat in Magnolia. The ferry that Mira booked is waiting next to a small bridge on the canal. It was a small boat with a canopy, and about four or five people could sit in the canopy. The boatman is a middle-aged man who looks quite friendly. He wears a straw hat and his face is covered with traces of wind and sun. Rhodes first handed over Myra's suitcase, jumped on the boat with the big bag on his back, and then turned around to hold Myra's forearm. Myra's hand also reached down to grab Rhodes' forearm, using the force to stand firm on the boat. The rest is up to you, Mira said to the captain, and then she and Rhode bent down and got into the awning of the boat and sat down opposite each other. Then please sit down and let's go. The uncle of the boatman shouted, untied the cable, propped it up on the shore with an oar, and the boat left the shore and went downstream. On the bottom of the boat, invisible to the boatman, a river crab swam forward quickly, five or six hundred meters beyond the boat. This was sent out by Rhodes to explore the path. Before going to the guild to meet Mira, he put the river crab into the canal. Before setting off, Rhodes observed the crewman from the perspective of a river crab for a while and found no problems. Now Rhodes will continue to let the river crab explore whether there are water bandits, water monsters and the like lurking ahead. Be cautious when going out. After observing the bottom and surface of the water from the perspective of the river crab, Rhodes withdrew his attention. Mira put her legs together, sitting sideways in a very ladylike posture, and her sun hat had been taken off and put aside. She was now curiously looking at the large backpack that Rhodes took off, wondering if Urza had infected him with the habit of carrying a lot of luggage with him. Come, take a look at what I have prepared. Rhodes opened his backpack and saw crystal balls one after another. The curiosity in Myra's eyes turned into shock in an instant. This, this is, the explosive magic crystal. Exploding magic crystal, a one-time magic prop. As the name suggests, it is an explosive thing. Its use is roughly equivalent to a grenade, but its power is far beyond that of an ordinary grenade. That's right, I borrowed it from the guild warehouse on purpose. Why do you need to borrow something like this? Because I'm not very good at offensive magic, I might not be able to summon wild monsters in time, so I bring these just in case. Rhodes took out two magic crystals and stuffed them into Myra's arms, you should also take two for self-defense. If anything happens, smash them hard. Probably you won't need this. Mira tried her best to keep a smile. It turned out that the preparation he was talking about meant this. However, Rhodes had another surprise. He pulled open a few crystal balls and took out a book from underneath. There is also a magic book. As long as you open it and inject a little magic power, you can activate the magic in the pages. We each carry a copy with us. Even the magic book. Rhodes was still rummaging through his bag. and. The uncle who was controlling the direction of the ferry at the stern was shivering. Mira held two magic crystals in her hands and a magic book on her lap. She looked at the contents of Rode's bag and said helplessly. Rode, these things you prepared are enough to blow up a small village. We are just going to participate in the celebration. When I borrowed these things, the president said the same thing. Rhodes thought for a while and said. I just think it feels safer this way. I originally wanted to ask the president to help me draw some defensive magic circles on my body, but he said he didn't have that kind of thing and kicked me out of the warehouse. Alas. Quote. Well, well. I seem to understand the president's mood. Mira wanted to return everything in her hand, but after thinking about it, she took a small magic crystal and put it in her bag. Thank you for your careful preparation. This is the safest time I have ever gone out recently. Rhodes regretfully put away the crystal ball handed back by Mira, this is also a last resort. 
When I become as strong as Natsu Urza, I won't be able to use these things. Wait a minute, have you made any other preparations? There are no special preparations, just two swift crabs. Rhodes lowered his voice and leaned close to her ear. One is exploring the way in front, and the other is hiding at the bottom of the boat. If anything happens, I will immediately pick you up and jump off the boat and run away. Thank, thank you. Nero was a little worried about what would happen if Rhodes actually took over the escort mission. If there is an attack then. Nero looked at Rhodes' backpack. Um, I hope the gangster is okay. Oh, in addition to the material aspect, there is also some metaphysical preparation. Quote dot 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 quote. Nira kept smiling and listened to him quietly. Because everyone said that Kana's divination is very accurate, I asked her to do a divination yesterday. Rhodes was not superstitious before, except when playing games to draw cards. But now in the world of magic, magic such as prophecy and divination also exists. It doesn't cost money anyway, just have some faith. Speaking of Kana's divination, Nira was still a little interested. What is the result? It is the, chariot, the king's chariot that overcomes obstacles and achieves victory. Rhodes said. Kana said that the chariot represents, never give up, and success through hard work and overcoming difficulties. If it is a fortune telling about travel, then the fortune will be good. If it is an accounting job, then your confident and rational attitude will make the client more confident. Quote. Isn't that great? Nira said, since your luck is so good, why do you need to prepare so many, self-defense weapons? Because you need to overcome obstacles, and you have to be rational to succeed. Rhodes pointed to his backpack, am I rational enough? Too sensible. Mira sighed softly, now as a, client, I am very confident that your mission will be successful. That's good, I'll be a little more vigilant. Rhodes' view of the two river crabs on the line seemed to be a, split screen, in his mind. He carefully observed all passing ships nearby and every pedestrian on the shore. Nira looked at Rhodes' condition and remembered the president's instructions. The purpose of going out this time was to make Rhodes relax a little, but it's okay to bring some expendable magic items for self-defense. Would anyone keep using magic for reconnaissance when traveling? He even thought of predicting fortune in advance. However, this is actually very good. If she had been half as cautious as Rhodes at that time, Lysina might not have. Compared to the powerful but arrogant and reckless me back then, maybe teaming up with Rhodes would be safer, right? Lysina's face appeared in my mind. Mira hugged her arms, it's all my fault. Mira, Mira. Mira was awakened by Rhodes' voice. Sorry, I was distracted. Did you find anything? There is no suspicious person. Is it cold in the cabin? Rhodes looked at Mira holding her arms. He took out a coat from his bag and said, fortunately, I'm prepared for this too. That was Rhodes' only coat. In fact, if Rhodes wanted to, he could stuff all his clothes into his bag, but there weren't many of them anyway. Thank you. Mira did not refuse and put her coat in front of her. The smell of the sun made her feel warm. Feeling the care from your companions in grief is the best comfort. It's not yet noon, and the cabin may be a little damp. Do you want to light a fire for you? Rhodes' fingers traced through the air, and each letter was shaped into a huge magic word, fire, which then shrunk to the size of a fist and turned into a burning flame. Mira was amused by the contrast and laughed out loud. This was the first time that Rhodes showed her three-dimensional text magic. She didn't expect to learn it like this. The boatman at the back finally couldn't bear it anymore. Don't play with fire in the canopy. What happened to this person? Not only did he bring a large bag of explosives, but he also played with fire in the cabin. Is he really not afraid of detonating it? Sorry, sorry. Rhodes waved his hand to make the flame disappear. As the boat goes down the river, the sun gradually rises. Even if the boat canopy blocks the sun, the air gradually becomes hotter. This is why you should take a boat instead of a river crab. It still took a while to arrive in Wadu. Mira opened her suitcase and took out a food box. I made some simple sandwiches in the morning. If you don't mind, let's eat them together. Although the taste is not as good as Mr. Cook's. You can cook. This is natural. Rhodes thought of the last time Mira purchased ingredients for Mr. Cook. I am afraid it was not that Mr. Cook had lowered his standards, but that Mira was really good at this. Don't look at me like this, I take care of Elfman myself. 
Mirab picked up a sandwich and handed it to Rhodes, but actually Elfman is also very good at cooking. Rhodes took the sandwich. He actually brought some bread, but at this time, all fools know how to choose, and throw the bread to worm later. Elfman, do you know how to cook? Rhodes tried to imagine Elfman wearing an apron. He couldn't imagine it at all. Is it that unbelievable? Mira smiled, didn't I say that Elfman is a very gentle child? She said she had said it before, but Rhodes thought it was her sister protecting her brother's image. He smiled and took a bite of the sandwich. Huh. What's wrong, does it taste bad? Mira checked the food box, the magic of keeping it fresh should not have failed. Let's not talk about the preservation magic. The taste is a bit familiar. Rhodes tasted it carefully. It's delicious. It's different from what you usually eat in the guild. Mira smiled and said, as long as you like it, I thought you wouldn't like what I cook because you are used to Mr. Cook's cooking. So that's it. It turns out that she also made the sandwich that day. Rhodes remembered the day he just woke up, with the same taste on his tongue and the same smile in front of him. He took another big bite, chewed quickly, and complained to himself in his mind. What a cliché love drama plot. Times such as eating and resting are often the times when people are most vulnerable to sneak attacks, and Rhodes knows this very well. So during the meal, and during the sleepy time that followed after the meal, he became more vigilant. The river crabs are ordered to cruise carefully in the canal, and occasionally put out their tentacles to observe the situation on the shore more clearly. In such a tense mood, the destination has arrived. The uncle of the boatman docked the boat. Rockers is ahead. My boat does not have permission to travel freely in the royal capital. Please disembark here. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. After thanking one for his hard work and thanking the other for his hard work, the boatman watched Rode put the suitcase on the boat and then helped Mira ashore. The oar propped up on the shore, then shook the oar vigorously, quickly moving away from the two dangerous people. It's so exciting, these two people are carrying dangerous items that can destroy a small village. When he came to book the boat yesterday, he thought the girl was very beautiful, but today he didn't dare to take a second look at her. It's good to be alive. You must be careful when encountering fairy tales magicians in the future. Rhodes looked at the boat that was leaving quickly, will he not pick up a few passengers or transport some cargo on the return trip? This feels like a loss. Mira held up her sun hat with one hand and squeezed the small crystal ball in her bag with the other. She looked at Rhodes with a smile in her eyes, yes, why? Compared with Magnolia, Rockers has a more big city feel. The entire city is built on a relatively flat highland, with thick walls built outside. A river meanders from the southwest entrance of the city wall to the inner city, which is the moat outside the palace wall. Then it flows out to the drainage outlet in the southeast corner, and rushes down along the high ground, forming a small waterfall. Rod and Mira came from the east of the city and could just see the waterfall wrapped in water vapor refracting colorful light. It's so beautiful. Mira couldn't help but stop and watch. Yeah, it's a pity that it doesn't match the city wall. Rhodes wanted to say that the water outlet was designed to look like a sewage outlet, but it felt like it would ruin the atmosphere. He sent the two river crabs on standby back to the summoner's rift, it's not easy to sneak in the swift crabs. We have to wait until we enter the city to summon them again. Mira stopped Rhodes from continuing intensive reconnaissance. Summoning wild monsters in the city would be too conspicuous. This is the royal capital. Don't worry about public security. Just relax. Quote dot dot dot. Okay. Rhodes didn't insist anymore. He was mainly worried about whether he would be intercepted at the city gate if he had a bunch of dangerous items on him. Facts have proved that it was too much to worry about. The guard responsible for guarding the city gate simply asked about his identity and purpose of visit. After Rhodes showed his coat of arms and Mira showed her invitation, he was immediately released. This careless, security check, made it difficult for Rhodes to believe that the security here would be very good. But if you think about it carefully, the Kingdom of Fiori has been a neutral country for more than 160 years, and there has been no internal rebellion. The royal power is very stable, and it probably doesn't have much sense of crisis. Flower beds can be seen everywhere on the streets of the royal capital, the windows of the houses are also filled with flower pots, and there are even carefully tended small gardens at the door. This is probably why this place is called the Flower City. 
The air is filled with the fragrance of flowers, definitely good news for people with pollen allergies. Of course, in the world of magic, there might be a solution. Rhodes carefully observed the surrounding environment. What should we do next? Senior Mirajan. Humph, according to Senior's experience, we should go to the hotel first. Mira shook the pass she had just taken. For the invitation, the magazine company has helped arrange it. I don't know if it was because Rhodes' eyes were too fierce, but he didn't encounter anyone looking for trouble or chatting with him on the road. Rockers Garden Hotel, one of the best hotels in the capital. This is the place where Sochala Magazine held the celebration, and it is also the place where Mira and Rod will soon settle down. Rhodes looked at the exquisite fountains and tall buildings, almost as big as Magnolia's landmark cathedral. How impressive. Is the magazine so rich? Mira said. Of course, after all, Sochala is the most popular magazine in recent years. The two entered the lobby side by side and were warmly received by the service staff. A male waiter with good features guided the two of them and politely offered to help with their luggage. Rhodes declined politely. He was afraid that if this guy didn't pay attention, the hotel would be gone. This is your room. Please keep your key. If you encounter any problems during your stay, please feel free to ask. I wish you a pleasant stay. The waiter gently opened the door, handed the key to Mira, and said goodbye politely. Rhodes blinked. A room. Ah, the magazine didn't know that I was going to bring my companions, so they only prepared one room. What should I do? Mira showed a troubled expression, put one hand on her collar, and her voice became pitiful. Rode won't take the opportunity to do anything excessive, right? For example, a night attack or something. Dark belly, dramatist. Luo, a gentleman, put down Myra's suitcase decisively, I'll open another room. I'm kidding, it's a suite, just one person can stay in one room. Well, I'm just kidding too. This hotel looks like it's not something I can afford right now. Mira sighed with a smile. It's all Kana's fault. Rod is not as interesting as before. How much do you want to see someone embarrassed? Rhodes said, so I should thank Kana. One thing to say is that Kana really doesn't treat his brothers as outsiders, especially when they get drunk and hook up with each other, they don't take it seriously at all. At first, Rhodes didn't get used to it, but later they became buddies. Shy. Unless her head is held directly in her arms, wearing armor doesn't count. Rod. What are you doing? Mira put her suitcase into the room she had chosen. When she came out, she saw Rhodes looking around in the bathroom, kitchen, and reception room. Rhodes said, check to see if there are magic crystals for surveillance. If not, there are perverted reporters who want to get your first-hand information. Well, it's really possible that Mira discovered that Rhodes' awareness as a guard is really super qualified. The two checked it carefully and found nothing unusual. Mira asked, the celebration starts at night, do you want to take a rest first? Rhodes glanced at the satchel on Myra's waist and the sun hat in her hand. She obviously wanted to go out. He moved his arms, I've been sitting on the boat all the way, and I want to move around a little bit. What about you? Mira laughed as expected, it's a rare time for me to come to the royal capital and I want to go shopping. Do you want to come with me? Rhodes said. Of course, I am a guard and I am entirely at the mercy of my client. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.